All right. We're partially here. <laughs> and Spidey, well, it wouldn't be no Spidey surfaces. That's it. Yeah, he's I mean, he, surfacing. He's, he's got to like suspend. He's got to figure out where to get the, the other way. <laughs> I want you to swing oh. in. <laughs> it would be funny if you can go by like George of the Jungle, though. You'd be like, oh, yep. <laughs> smack into the. I think on the next one, you're just gonna see me like dead drop from from <laughs> smack down, be unconscious for the first 15 minutes of the stream. Yep. And then just moaning in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Now, um, quick announcement early. Scott Rouse is supposed to be here from the behavior panel. Unfortunately, somebody had the discourtesy to get in a car wreck or something in his neighborhood and shut down his internet until 9 p.m. Projected. So I don't know what's going on. But good news. Uh, Greg Hartley was going to be on next week now it'll be scott rouse and greg hartley next week so trust me nobody's nobody's losing now it's just a matter of timing and i don't know maybe i could twist arms and get other people to show up too i i never know i don't know if it's twisting arms or, or begging profusely but i i try to do both we're not worthy <laughs> oh please now i'm not sure but w w i guess the the goal of the stream is to see at what point will Rob's head explode or is he completely calmed down about his um, favorite, um, was this the second meeting of the Elaine um, fan club? Second or third, I can't remember. We'll see. We'll see. I'm calm. I'm calm. And no, I here's have the thing. You guys I may not calming know juice. That, you guys may not know this, but since the last stream, uh, Rob's really turned around and now he's a really big fan of Elaine. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Massive. Huge. Maybe we could change that. Yep, and I don't blame her at all for like planting that car in Scott's neighborhood and taking out his internet. That's not her fault. <laughs> That's speculation. That's pure speculation. I didn't need any more confirmation for my analysis of Elaine Bredehoff than Elaine arranging for a car to take out Scott's internet. <laughs> I love how Rob goes up when he needs to calm himself down. His eyes just go up. It's like sort of like his his meditation as he looks to the universe for answers. It's my um, happy place. Yeah, you <laughs> know, Rob and I were talking, and it's it's, uh, it's really interesting. He has some he has some really good points that illustrate why Elaine is a much better lawyer than uh, Ben Chu and Camille Vasquez. That I look forward to him sharing with you all. Um. <laughs> you know what I'm, I'm what what I find is interesting. <laughs> I don't know who's the lead attorney because some articles said it was Rottenborn was the lead attorney. And now it's going around that lead attorney for Amber Heard, Elaine, whatever her last name is, I can't, I can never remember it. Bredhoff. Bredhoff. Okay, is the um, lead attorney. So I, I have no idea what that is. But really quickly, before we get into the joys of Elaine, I want to cover another video that I put out yesterday, because that one, it, I knew it was going to be controversial the second I put it out. That's why. I pin put in the description. Everybody thinks this is fake. I put in a pinned comment. Everybody thinks this is fake. Here's an article from CNN. Put the same article in both where they claim it was fake. Supposedly the person had texted the author of the article. I will point out for some reason, though, I don't always trust CNN. I know that their 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 record is perfect, right? But you know, I'm I'm just paranoid and silly. Must be my blondness. And I noticed in the article, I was like, oh, they texted you, but you forgot the screenshots of that. You, you, you somehow could not convey and share, you, even if you blur it out. And yes, I know it can be faked. I know texts can be faked, but just, you know, you know, for um, giggles, it would be fun to um, actually see the comments from the person who said, oh, it was a fake and I closed the account. However... The person I had doing this is Peter Hyatt. And Spidey, I believe, can confirm that what Peter Hyatt does is a technique called statement analysis. It is not, it is another tool like reading body language. I would argue Spidey actually uses body language combined with statement analysis and probably a little psychology on the side. Yeah. And, and maybe some more, but I, but those are your main core things. Like, yeah, there are a lot of statement analysis of body language. Yeah, and listen, there there is evidence in studies that if you just pay attention to what someone is saying over the physicality and what they're doing, 
it, in, in research settings, it has bolded better results that listening to the statements does get you a lot of truths. It's not to say that it gives us all the answers. This is a thing, and Eric, you and I talk about this a lot. It's a problem that I have with a lot of professionals in my field where because eventually like the ego gets to a certain point, we forget that there are certain circumstances or situations where we're just not seeing anything. Like there, like there are times where I catch myself having to analyze because someone asked and I go, okay, I have to find something here. And I stop and I go, no, no, it's an adequate answer to just say, I got nothing here because that happens a lot. And it's, it, it does an injustice to the industry when we claim that we can analyze absolutely everything. I'm not taking anything away from Hyatt at all. Not even a little bit. I'm not even speaking about the video from yesterday. I have absolutely no chips to play on this one because I haven't seen the footage of the supposed jury member. I'm not familiar with it. I haven't done analysis of it. I, all I'm saying is I'm just being to the limits of all of these fields, body language, statement analysis, psychology, all of it has its limits because sometimes we see things and sometimes we just don't see anything. Okay. And I wanted to further clarify too, because Rob, was, he um, texted me earlier and said, I was listening to this on the way home. There's so much context he's missing. It's making me crazy. In fairness, when Peter Hyatt did this, he had a transcript. And the transcript was not even the entire TikTok. And it was quite literally a transcript. No voice, no recording. And this is very important to note because in statement analysis, they actually avoid hearing or watching. They want straight transcripts because it is literally... Let's look at the written word. Let us, let's look at what is put out here. So that is all he had. And at the same time, that is all I had. Because last week, that TikTok video came up in the chat while we were on the show. Rob figured, ah, it sounds like it's BS. And then I started hearing around, it's probably BS. I never listened to it, never watched it. So we didn't even necessarily know the gender. I guess the gender was male just by the language in it. And it is male because I've heard it and I have it here. But I wanted to set the expectations so everybody understands what was being evaluated and the fact that there's a whole lot more to it. Um, and I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, dress it up or anything else. I'm just trying to be very realistic on what somebody's evaluating because I think he did come into a lot of accuracies on how the individual probably does feel about Johnny Depp, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But whether that person is actually a juror or not, really, it seems to be in doubt. So on that note, I want to play the TikTok while we're here. And then Rob can, you know, address it because he's been sitting there very quietly. Like, why am I here? What, what, <laughs> am I just showing up? But, you know, you're adding the beauty to oh, the show. We know why Rob's here. We all know. We all know why Rob's here. He's here for the beauty. He's here for the beauty. So today was my last day of being a juror on the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial. And I wish to remain anonymous, but I thought I'd give some insight on my thoughts about the trial. Um, I don't follow pop culture too much, so I haven't really been a fan of Johnny Depp or Amber Heard. So I feel I was able to be pretty unbiased about the whole thing. But from the very beginning, when Amber heard was testifying uh everything just seems so off with how she kept making eye contact with me and it made me extremely uncomfortable to where i would no longer look over at her when she was giving her answers and um, i would just listen intently and everything she was saying came off like bullshit okay that was the transcript eric there's a bunch of people in the comments saying that the guy already came out and said it was a joke. Not just one person, but like five or six people. I'm, I'm seeing that. And somebody said that he released another video stating it was a joke. And I would love, please um, comment below later or whatever it is. Yeah, if it was just Send one or two people, I'd be like, okay, may maybe they're just making up or Mr. But there's like a lot of people saying that same thing. Right. Well, again, I, I posted an article where the CNN article that I put on my post claimed that he was texting with a person and said that it was a joke or that he lied. Yeah. Let's play it to the end. And then I'm going to blow up on the fact that this guy admitted it was a joke and how terrible that is and how awful the consequences are. Okay. Perfect. And I wasn't following anything on TikTok during the whole trial. And I was scrolling through after the trial and, uh, 
blows my mind on how every single person seemed to be commenting on how weird it was. So, uh, good news for Johnny Depp. Um, that's That was my gut feeling after all the information in the trial. Um, but Amber Heard, what a, what a crazy woman. Okay, and you can see there's a little bit of the back and forth where I guess people are asking questions, but I can't see it that well. Um, all right. Now, hold on. Oh, what is this? Rob is, uh, Rob, Rob, Rob I think he went to get his stress ball or something. I did. Oh, no. I went to go. Actually, I, I put it over here. Let me, let me actually grab it. <laughs> Get Rob prepared and everything. You know, while everybody's here, you can always hit the like button. We'd love, love to have that happen. And and who knows? I, maybe I'll get lucky. What? Oh, <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em Robot. <laughs> or or Robot. Rock'em Sock'em Robot. <laughs> okay, so... Let me, let me start with kind of the context of where it was that we kind of, well, we, some others, and I kind of saw that this was maybe not legit. One, he says, today was my last day. Well, it was sunny-ish, but it was gray. Um, the sun wasn't actually out. Two, where they park is a garage. So the jurors park in a garage, covered space. And when you see the video, you can see that there's trees in the background as he gets into his car. Three, the voice is male. And that narrowed the field down significantly. Um, it was also comments. It wasn't so much what he said in the video, but listening to Peter's analysis, a lot of it rang true. There was a lot of self-aggrandizement. There was mm -hmm. a lot of I, me, my, very personal. It was very personal. And it was very much um, all of the different caveats he put on all the words were meant to calm what he was saying but it it tried to make him sound too invested it made him sound too invested mm -hmm. he was too invested in the outcome he came off as a johnny depp fan um and then in the comments a lot of people were asking him various questions one of them was about the punitive damages and they said you know it got downwardly modified to 350 did you know and he came back with an unequivocal statement that said i knew we knew it would get modified downward to 350. We did it to send a message. Elaine Bredehoff mentioned the maximum of 350 punitive in the closing argument, mm -hmm. but it was never actually given to the jury as, as something that was unequivocally stated, like as in this is the law, this is the max you can go. And the fact that he came back with that statement of such conviction indicated to me that this person was making this statement a couple of days after the fact, after the confusion about the 350, because there was a great deal of confusion about this 350 max and whether it was truly downwardly modified, whether he would have, to, whether she would owe anything above that. Um, why then state the 5 million when it's 350? The unequivocal statement, just in a quick response to a comment that said max 350, and he said, yes, we knew, we sent a message. That's not what a juror would say. Um, so there were red flags all over the place. Also, the timing of the release. I mean, I hated it. But here's a broader point on why this is really significant. Right now, this order has not yet been entered. It's set down for entry on June 24th. So right now, the court still has jurisdiction over its own case. They can do various things. They can reconsider a judgment. They can reconsider a ruling. They can reconsider various parts of the order that's still open now the likelihood of success on that is extremely unlikely but it still leaves that window open when the order is entered that order remains the phrase is within the breast of the court for 21 days so the court has 21 days after the date they sign that order to make corrections or to hear additional argument for example a motion to reconsider a motion to reconsider can be filed based on juror misconduct so someone coming out with a statement this quickly opens the door for, even if it's not going to be granted in a court, it opens the door for these arguments to be made, which just fuels the fire of debate and backlash on the Twitter sphere, on TikTok, wherever you want to call it. And it 
it actually adds fuel to the Amber Heard argument that all of this was social media and, you know, it influenced the jury. I mean, you heard Elaine Bredehoff come out and she quite literally is baiting jurors. Like, please oh, come oh, out. We, we're we're, we're, we're going to hear it. Well, yeah. We're going to be covering that because, Rob, you, you might calm down. And I can't have that because Spidey has expectations. So I'm here to serve Spidey. And that yeah. means we have to keep you at, at a certain peak level here. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so this this TikTok response was the exact thing that you might ponder or you might guess was on the mind of Elaine Bredehoff when she was making the statements about how the jury was unreliable. And of course, they saw social media. It was irresponsible. It was it was not a joke. That's not a funny joke to make. Um, and it really put a lot of people in a position that just a lot of risk to it. So I, it was really stupid. Should never have been done. Agree. Agree. So now to the next part, last week we ran kind of long, you know, plenty for an hour. <laughs> we ran you know, really, really long. And thank you very much. I am collecting super chats and definitely want to go through me a couple really quickly here. Chase Hughes. Um, when Scott couldn't make it, I, I tried to, um, reach out to get Chase Hughes. Uh, just just want to point it. out, just want to point out, could have as a non-contraction. <laughs> yeah, by the way, folks, what Spidey just did is statement analysis. <laughs> and throwing shade. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, it was. Yes, it was. I know uh, Chase uh, is laughing. It's interesting how I'm... No, no, go back, go back. I'm not done. Uh-oh. <laughs> It's interesting how he says, I'm here watching. There's a contraction there, mm -hmm. but wish I could have made it. That's a non-contraction. I feel like there's a bit. And you know, you know who taught me about non-contractions is Chase Hughes. So just, you know, <laughs> the student has become the master. Stuck on a coaching call. Seems pretty, uh, seems pretty distant. A coaching call. Chase's next chat to call you out. Like, <laughs> 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 you know what? As long as I get paid, <laughs> his, ne his, ne his next chat is going to be like, "Spidey, you have all, all my courses on your account. I've been canceled. You're no longer allowed to learn from me." Yes, <laughs> I downloaded them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, a mega pie for JD's birthday. Thank you very much. And I, you know what? I saw um, Johnny Depp's birthday. I was like, "Was that today or yesterday?" Because I, I don't even know. I, I see the news go by, and I'm like, "Well, that probably might have already happened." But if it is his birthday, cool. Salut. Happy birthday. I'm sure you're doing fine. Um, McCann McKenzie? I probably mutilated it. Damn it. Chase says my account is now deleted. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. He, he moves quickly. Spidey and Rob, your magical duo. I really enjoy how you spar and your analysis are always on point. And, and thank you. Thank you, Susie. That I can I can hang out with him. I feel lucky that I can. Um, did I see the Team Z special? No, I didn't. I'm sure it's a hack job. I, I have you noticed that I'm afraid to watch any kind of story about celebrity, whatever, because my, my I do a show called America's Untold Stories with Mark Robert, and he shreds these. And I hate to say it, but like a lot of National Geographic, National Geographic, very much infiltrated by the CIA. I know that sounds goofy or paranoid, but it is a fact. Go look it up. It's been that way for 100 years. Because, you know, a great way to go around the world and be able to be in every single country on the planet, be a photographer, or be an opera. So, and Doctors Without Borders, there are huge problems with that too. And I will come back to the course. But again, CIA infiltration. As a matter of fact, they were using that to catch bin Laden. And that's why they have a polio problem is because they were in Pakistan distributing polio vaccine to get information to capture bin Laden. And now people there are refusing the vaccine because of the CIA connotation. So th there, there are big problems with that. But anyway, back to this. Uh, Super sticker from Laura, thank you. This isn't a joke. It's just line from Robbie Stigler. I agree. And I, I saw this a bunch of times. He claimed to be number juror seven in his comments. I, I didn't comment on that because... They had actual jury numbers that they had, and then there were jury numbers that, like, Rob granted or said uh, juror I or nine. I don't know if there was a juror I or nine, or that was just if you're looking at and counting across, it's nine. So I, I don't know. 
Rob, you can tell me. Was there I mean, no? Yeah, that was that was another red flag. The fact that they said juror seven because the only way they were going to get that was from social media. Okay. Well, it, was that? Wait. Well, now, in in fairness, he did say I've been watching a lot of TikToks. And and that's juror number I'm seven. Like. You weren't just watching TikToks. You were watching YouTube videos by either me, Ian, someone else that was in that courtroom that labeled them juror seven or yeah. No, you, you didn't just watch TikToks. Okay. Well, yeah, again, yeah. I let me get on that. I'll uh, get this. I'll start collecting more here. So let's go and queue up a lane because uh, judging from last time, we didn't uh, run through it super fast. And Elaine, hmm, there's going to be a lot of stopping. A Virginia jury's decision to be interviewed this morning. Elaine, thank you. We're so very glad you're here. Thank you. Uh, we heard Amber's reaction uh, to the verdict yesterday. This this seems to be a huge victory for Johnny Depp this morning. Yeah, a major setback for women, mm -hmm. for women inside the courtroom and outside the courtroom. Okay, by the way, I'm going to interrupt. What I wanted to do with this, and I just don't have the time, is I literally wanted to cut all of her answers up into mm -hmm. segments and take the Today Show's interview, take this interview, and they just intersperse them because she gives the same damn answers whatever is stated. Yep. Yeah, you yep. you don't need to. You can just you can just replay the answer she gives on this interview, and it'll be what she said on today's show. Exactly. But we're going to see a very important distinction at some point coming up, and I'm going to pause you. And there's one statement in this interview that I could write a doctoral dissertation on when it comes to both statement and body language, and we're going to get there in a minute. Um, and I hope Chase will stick around for this. And even if he can't be with us here on the video, that he'll you know in the comments he'll throw in a couple of golden nuggets here because there's something she's about to say one of the only differences between this one and today's show that to me was a beautiful moment when it comes to analysis i'll stop you when we get there all right because because basically what this said you know amber had an enormous amount of evidence, although a lot of it was suppressed in this case as opposed to the UK. Mm. But look at all the women who have no evidence, mm -hmm. all these women who suffer from domestic violence, domestic abuse, they don't have evidence. And basically what this jury said is unless you pull out your cell phone and you tape record your spouse beating you, you're out of luck. But Elaine, I think it was bigger than that because you have the evidence, as you say, but they did not believe her. Mm. Why do you think they did not believe her? I will say it early. These guys did a decent job, and they weren't buying into her BS. Because mm -hmm. they, they were pushing. And, and, and Especially pushing Nate, harder. Nate Burleson. Like, you could yeah. see, you know, he's usually quite animated, quite, you know, alive. You could tell every time the camera cuts wider to his face, there's some tightness in the lips. There's this very uh, sort of empty glare, um, which we often see in someone who's sizing up an opponent. So, yeah, I don't think he's buying. Well, anyway. <laughs> and not, not to well, not to preview what's coming up, but watch, watch her response in a minute or in a couple of seconds when she gets back into a corner. She, she looks like a wild animal, which, which threat do I attack first? So just watch what happens when the questions start coming from multiple directions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and by the way, I hate to make the comparison, but you know how they had that super cut by, I think Joe Smithy did an amazing thing with all of LawTube at the same time. You like put all the videos together. Uh -huh. um, the guy you were talking about, Nathan, what, reminded me of the lead attorney because the lead attorney, when he was watching Amber Heard getting across, he was just like, what is this? <laughs> it's just classic. And I feel like this guy was kind of doing it that with Elaine a little bit like, what kind of BS are you putting on me now? It, it just gave me that vibe. And let me find that lost tab. I think that a lot of that was that it was Johnny Depp. Uh, I think the celebrity status. Uh -huh. But she's a celebrity too. And, and it's but, not wait, not but she's a, yeah, but she but she's a celebrity too. Right. But you have to remember, it, we have, it's a tale of two trials. All the evidence came in. By the way, from pause the UK. Okay, Mr. Depp. That's what Elaine does when she shifts the script. So in my in my video, I compared her to Tickle Me Elmo, and I've now been calling her Tickle Me Elaine because she only has like a set number of responses. <laughs> Tickle Me Elaine, what the hell is funny? Oh God! Okay, she so only, she only has a set now. Number. Now, 
Even she only has a set number of responses, and when she clicks over to one, we see this sort of stutter, what we call a, a speech disfluency, which is like this, like this quick stutter as she kind of decides which script she's going to go to. Because if you look at this, what she's answering here doesn't answer the question. That happens a lot throughout this interview, where what she's saying doesn't. So it's just what she wants to plug in at that point. She goes, and then she goes to the. Uh, Tale of Two Trials script from the Tickle Me Elmo, Tickle Me Elaine bank of answers. So that's what we're getting there. Well, and, and she has to. I mean, it, God, she's worse than a politician. They're at least a little smoother. You know, a, a politician, when you capture them, they won't go right into their talking point. Of course, they'll get there. But they'll say, let me ask you a question, Spidey. Yeah. How do you feel? And then now I just hijack it. So it's like... Yeah. You knock them on their heel a little bit, get them involved, make them think that they're you're answering. So they ask a question mm -hmm. back, and then you answer that question. Then they re they finish it off. Like, oh, they did answer your question because you had an interaction. She doesn't even do yep. that. She just goes. Yeah, well, you know, Most you were talking about totally some debate. guests you're going to have on here next week, uh, which is um, Scott Rouse and Greg Hartley, two of the best in the business, absolutely at the top of analysis. And Greg talks about chef and redirect. This isn't even, mm. the chef isn't even there. This is just straight up redirect. It's like, you asked me this, but I'm going to answer that. Usually with what he calls chef and redirect, this is like a sort of a tactic that some people use where it's like mm. they, they throw some relevant garbage at it first and then they redirect. So it kind of looks like they answered. Or resume they redirect. statement. It's a good she one She sometimes too. doesn't even do that. She just randomly switches the, the, the answer and goes to one of her Tickle Me Elaine scripts. Yeah, a, good, a, a typical resume statement would be an example, too. She'd be like, I have been in law dealing with victims for 60-something years or however many years. And well, uh, with all the people who come by, I just see the heart. And, and you're like, what? So and, hold and on. Hold on. Eric, to your point, and it's a brilliant point, what, that what Chase calls resume statements, what uh, Phil Houston calls convincing statements is exactly what you just described, some sort of statement to build your character. Mm -hmm. uh, and... That's a tactic to give yourself credibility, to be like, I know about this and I'm informed about this. She may not have said that, but she did start this by saying, well, you have to understand. And, and again, that's a statement she makes. Up. You have to understand. Like, you know, you, you got to get like, I understand this on a certain level. You have to get to where I am on this level of understanding, oh, which is the reason later. I innovated another term related to Elaine. It's a, it's a very it's called, ineffective way of doing it because it's a command. I, I completely agree. Elaine issues a command. And even, even on the resume statement, there's an effective and artful way to do it, which is the politician's way of doing it, which is where they bring you in with your own words. They use your own words and they put mm -hmm. them back at you. And it's when you hear your own words repeated to you, you're instantly more open to it and then they issue the resume statement they plug it in perfectly it's a really effective way of debating and what elaine does here is to stop reset regurgitate i mean it is it's just that's great blunt. Stop, it's, a, stop, it's blunt there's no finesse it's, it's very very blunt and and you can feel it and, um spidey she actually does do a resume statement later uh in yeah no she, she does quite a few because she tries to like sort of ascertain that credibility before she redirects and uh, the term I came up with, <laughs> the term I came up with is Elaine explaining. So when she goes, oh, I like that. Yeah, when she goes, like you have to understand, like this is, and she starts sentences a lot like that, like I have an understanding of this. You need to understand as well. I call that Elaine explaining, and we just got a really good example of Elaine explaining. I like Spidey with the terms. Brought yeah, that right. one. The burden of proof was on the son. In, in the UK because they had called him a wife beater and talked about the domestic violence. What's refreshing is that was the first true statement that she said. The burden proof was on the sun. Mm -hmm. So I, I, am I correct, Rob? So out of everything, that's the one nugget of truth. Yeah. And I mean, she, she re references the sun because that's her most supported argument the entire time. It's the only way she wins this argument. Mm-hmm. He had his opportunity to tell the truth then. Um, and a three-week trial, he lost. The judge found 12 yeah. acts of domestic violence, including sexual violence. And that came out November 2, 2020. We weren't allowed to tell the jury that. Well, it's a different system. And the judge, it wasn't a jury, it was a judge. judge the judge said uh, it was substantially yeah. true. Uh, and that's, that is significant and I think surprised a lot of legal analysts. But, you know, in this case, the jury not only didn't believe Amber Heard, but in ruling that she acted with actual malice, that means she had the intent to cause harm, right? That's a pretty high standard to have proven. And it's pretty amazing. 
<laughs> okay, so Eddie, what's that? I'm not. I'm, I'm waiting. I, I'm waiting for my I one line. Something. I'm waiting for my yeah. moment. So okay. look at Nate. Look at Nate during that. Oh, yeah. Nate. Oh, he's Nate sitting is, there. He's just like he's coiling. He's oh, he's yeah. he is, and I like I like that. Like he, he, people will see. It's not BS. People will actually see me do it. Like if I do the lean back or if I do this, it's it's you're putting yourself in a position that is a forced comfortable position. And you just want to spring from that position because you're just waiting for that moment. Like Nate is back there and he's kind of in this posture. Like I'm just waiting for you to give me one minute. And, <laughs> and he's collecting. It's kind like, of, he's collecting every, go ahead. Just keep talking. Just keep talking. Keep talking. We're, 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 we're you got waiting for the moment. Since the op-ed never even mentioned Mr. Depp, you have to remember that. What they learned you from have to remember the that, Elaine Planning is to demonize mm -hmm. Amber, which is what they did, and to try to suppress as much of the evidence. Now, his his reaction right then, when it was kind of, it, it was a whatever. I mean, did, did you feel like she was convincing him? Nope. It came in in the UK and did not come in in the United States. But the other problem is we had cameras in the courtroom. So here we had, not only did we have a group of Depp fans that were there every there day, a hundred were allowed in, they lined Engine up at the 1 o'clock in the morning for their wristbands to be in that courtroom, but we had everything on camera and we had tremendous social media that was very, very, very much against Amber. Very well, it was demonized. pointed out that that was the first time that a victim of sexual abuse had to testify on live television mm. and, and I fought hard and lost that battle so, I, it should not have happened so I'm I am a former NFL player and after a hard loss it's easy to wake up and point to the other side oftentimes I realized the better thing to do was to look in the mirror what mistakes did I make as a player what mistakes did our coaching staff make and then how can we improve from there do you feel like you guys made any mistakes along the way? Do you feel like Amber made a mistake while she was on the stand? Because you're saying it's the celebrity, it's Johnny, it's the, it's the people who support him. But what about you and your team? Well, and, and that's an excellent question. And to say, and you know, Amber even <laughs> said on the stand, I am not. Part By the way, that's an excellent question. Is an immediate, I'm buying time to come up with something. Immediate. Yeah. And, um, and what I'm Nate so does there too with the hands, the hand movements. Sorry, Eric. I was too excited. No, 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 no. That's awesome. Um, actually, um, we're getting excitement out here. Chase is uh, saying that Spidey's going to take his shirt off soon. And, and, and no, we don't want to drop it. the viewers to zero. <laughs> Chase, that only works for you because you're like Tan you. Daddy. Yeah, he's known as Tan Daddy. I'm yeah. not kidding, folks. Look it up. Tan Daddy, Chase. Here. I'm a, I'm of Armenian descent. If I remove the shirt, it just looks like there's another shirt under it. <laughs> Now you've just guaranteed that Chase is going to stay in the chat because it's like he's like, what are they going to say next? <laughs> it's the goal. Oh, God. I am a human being. These people were giving her death threats. They threatened to microwave her baby. Oh, that would drove me crazy when I heard her say it, too. I was like, I was just, I was waiting for baby in a blender. I'm uh -huh. sorry for that, but I'm just like. Did you, did you hear the reporting on this one? That this was in reference to another case, another defamation case. Oh, of course. Where was. someone had said that they they had gotten threats of microwaving the baby, and then Amber comes up with it two weeks later. Dude, uh, a lot of her testimony felt like dialogue from films. Now I know that there's arguments whether it was actual dialogue, but I'm telling you, it was like the whole thing of you know how many pounds of pressure will break your that that's a movie line. Even though it may not be the exact line in the movie, I'm telling you it's a movie line. And especially yeah. since Johnny seemed to like to put pressure on people's wrists because didn't he do it in two different instances? Uh -huh. Yeah. Not to mention how deceptive she was when she actually said it because she changed the tone of her voice to actually be like acting. She was like, do you know how many pounds? The second that you're doing that and narrating on behalf of somebody else and actually changing your voice to try and mock them, it's, yeah, you're full of shit. No, oh, yeah, because if it's really that terrifying, you wouldn't change your voice. You wouldn't mock. 
This yep. is the kind of social media she was getting. So are any of us perfect? No. Is there something else we feel we should have done? Yes, I, I, absolutely. I, I always, I redo my closings a hundred times afterwards, whether I win or lose. Um, that's that's part of being a good lawyer, a good trial lawyer is right. there's always something. But I think that there were a lot of influences here that were beyond our control. And really? I think the social media, had, it, it was like a Roman Coliseum. It is... is you're telling me to pause? Keep, oh, no, 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 keep going. I'm waiting. I'm, I think it's coming okay. up. I'm trying to remember way to when describe. the. Um, go ahead. No, no, go. Okay. No, he was commenting. He was commenting. Here. Emily's here. And I have to uh, believe. Oh, that Emily's the jury, here. Even though they're told not to go and look at anything, we had. You know, they have weekends. They have families. They have. Yeah, social they were not media. sequestered. They were not sequestered. And, and, and the ten-day you know, period we had. How could they not have been influenced? But Elaine, for most people watching this channel, a lot of people, as you know, got huge views. It just seemed to be a, it seemed to be so messy and salacious and so tawdry on both sides, on both sides. And I think a, a lot of people from the outside oh, looking in thought both of them were not Hold telling on. the truth and that they had both. Did you yes. see how happy she was with the at the salacious comment? Um, let me go. Look at her they face. They have families. They have yeah. They were not media. sequestered. They were not sequestered. And, and, and the ten you know, day period we had, how could they not? have been influenced. But Elaine, for most people watching this channel, a lot of people, as you know, got huge views. It just seemed to be, a, it seemed to be so messy and salacious and so tawdry. Yeah. Well, nice. That's a, that, that is a, a response that she's finally buying my story. Yep. Yeah. And that is, that is a true, happy expression. That's not faked. That's real. Love it. Yeah. Agree. Agree. She's like, yes, finally, someone on my side, something I can use. Love it. Good catch, Rob. Really good catch. By the way, super glad Emily's here because I don't know if you guys know this, but as of yesterday, Emily and I became best friends. But also, I'm I'm yeah. really excited that people <laughs> in the comments are several people are referring to her as Shadow, and I'm really glad that that's sticking because and Eric and Rob, I need you guys to help me get this out there. Emily is no longer Emily; she is now Shadow. Okay, that's her name. Why? Why? I'm glad you asked. So when Emily D. Baker, the artist formerly known as Emily D. Baker was young, um, she went to a camp where her favorite horse was named Shadow. And so later, when she was a little bit older, she became a camp counselor at that camp and decided that her name as a counselor was going to be Shadow. So the same way I was Spidey when I was a camp counselor, and that stuck until now, she was Shadow. But then I guess because she was, had to be all serious in court and stuff, she had to use her real name but we all know that it's really shadow. So everyone watching in the comments, I can already see it sticking. She is dubbed shadow. Shadow. You just want to have the Spidey and Shadow show, be honest. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> of course I do. It's got an alliteration. It's, you know, that, that's well, all absolutely. it is. <laughs> SNS analysis. Hell yeah. Let's go. <laughs> On both sides. On both sides. And I think for the, a lot of people from the outside looking in thought both of them were not telling the truth and that they had both, that it, they mutually abused each other. Do you not believe that that was the case? No, and, and that's one of the many misnomers. The way that Depp's team approached this was based on ignorance of domestic violence. It, they, it completely ignored the cycle of violence and just said, oh, she wouldn't have done this if he had been hitting. See, that even was their like, so Gail has kind of just like a... I mean, just her expression is so mm, doer. And by the way, uh, there's over 6,000 people watching. Yeah. It'd be really awesome. I mean, truly awesome. If, uh, if you guys couldn't find it in your heart to remember to subscribe, love to have you. Maybe it's a launch up, but maybe I might cross 50,000. It would be, it would be a miracle, but that would be really, really something. Um, any, uh, are we at the stopping point yet, Spidey? Or Please. No, I, I haven't heard it yet. I don't know if I keep playing it because I maybe okay. I was too excited by Rob getting all worked up. But play it till the end, and I'll let you know if, if we hit it. If not, I'll go back and find it and give you the timestamp. Okay, so you're going to make us suffer twice. I see how it is. Based off that they weren't fighting <laughs> I, fair? Correct. I, I don't think they were fighting fair. And you think um, Amber Heard is, in fact, a survivor of domestic violence? Yes, I, I absolutely believe that. And okay. there's a trend. I'm sorry, the way he says, so you think in Okay, so so it's right here. You, pa you paused it right here. So I really hope Chase is still here. Um, 
the, the answer starts literally right here where you paused it. So she's saying there was a tremendous amount of evidence. It starts here. Go for it. All right. I'll even back it in here. He's in fact a survivor of dementia. No, I wanted to come in his guy. This guy's expression is like he's talking to a, a child in a way like, so you're telling me that your teacher didn't send homework home tonight? Right. Or is skeptic, that just me? Skeptic tone, yeah. Domestic yes, I, I absolutely believe that. And there's a tremendous amount of evidence, much of which did not come into this trial, did come into the UK trial. We even had more evidence. We had medical records. We had mental health records that went back to 2012 that were contemporaneous. We had text messages from Mr. Depp's assistant saying, when I told him that he had kicked you, yeah. he cried. So how that is she today, Elaine? How is she today? What is, what is her next move? She's right. Well, her next move is. Eric, a pause. Okay. Hold on. Let me get my stretches in here. <clears throat> ah. Vocal, vocal tone test. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> get, get us, get us all three of us on the thing. Let's, let's get Elaine. No, 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 not just me. Not just me. Spidey doesn't like this. I need, I need Robin Eric. Dude, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so okay so we have we have quite, we have quite a few things going on here that's my favorite statement of all our interviews um and again there's something with the physicality of it and then there's something in the comparison of the words that she uses that to me i talked about this in my video but for a lot of your subscribers i think this is the elaine moment for me so first look at her head movement as she shifts from there was a lot of uh, tremendous amount of evidence that wasn't in this trial, but that was in the UK trial. And she goes mm. from neck guarding to head tilting, which are pretty much opposite when it comes to body language. And this is like, I don't even need to quote any of the research on this. You can understand this on a reflex basis. When we are self-conscious or we feel defensive, we block important areas of our body, the vital organs, the reproductive organs, the wrists and the neck. These are the things that we know instinctively we need to protect. And these things get protected when we feel vulnerable. So we see this. So neck guarding or head tilting, like, like in this sense, downwards, is a very defensive thing. Head tilting is the opposite of that. Generally speaking, nothing is an absolute, but generally speaking, head tilting exposes the neck and leaves us very vulnerable. So when we're comfortable with a thought or when we, we like something or we're comfortable around people, we do see head tilting quite a little bit more often, or if we're trying to show confidence, like a rapper on, a, on the album cover standing like this, like what, I'm not scared of anything. So whether we are confident or we're trying to show confidence, this is something that happens. So if this was the only isolated time where that shift happened, I'd say, okay, you know, sometimes our heads move in certain ways, but that's the second time in this video that she talks about this trial and then the UK trial, and both times she goes from neck guarding to head tilting, as she talks about that shift. We see that twice. So to me, that was important. But it, again, it's one of those things that it's an interesting note. She seems to feel a little more self-conscious with this trial and then the UK trial. She even holds this head tilt as she talks. So I think it's interesting to note. Am I? Is that gonna give me everything I need to know about Elaine? It's not. Let's look at that statement there because this to me is exactly where I went, oh, Elaine, you little rascal. So she says, tremendous amount of evidence. And then she starts listing what this evidence is. She says, we had medical records, comma. We had mental health records, comma. We had texts from his assistant saying, blah, 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 whatever that you're saying. He cried when I said <laughs> that when I told him he kicked you. So Rob is going to talk about in a moment how that's hearsay and that's not evidence of anything at all. But I want to talk about the first two things she said. We have medical records. We have mental health records. And look Which at that same thing. We have this. We have that. Like it's two mm -hmm. different things. Now we talked earlier about how what she said on the Today Show and what she said on CBS Morning was very similar. That one statement was significantly different because if you listen to that on the Today Show, she said it like this. Mm -hmm. She said, we have medical records, which are records of her talking to her therapist, talking uh, all the way, dating all the way back to 2012, blah, 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 blah. So on the Today Show, we find out that the mental health records are the medical records. Right. It's the same thing. And something we see, and this goes back to statement analysis, something we see in people who feel like they don't have enough examples of something or enough evidence of something, 
they'll take one thing and stretch it out into multiple things. So for example, let's say yesterday I gave an example of like, if my mom tells me I'm not eating healthy, but let's say, let's switch it up for a different example. Let's say my mom calls me and says, Spidey, you don't exercise enough. And I go, what are you talking about? I went to the gym the other day, you know, I did 30 minutes on a treadmill. Uh, I, I lifted some weights, but this is all that same activity. It's going to the gym and I'm just sort of mm. trying to stretch that out as much as I can. So in this case, when she's saying we have medical records, we have mental health records, like that's a different thing. But on the Today Show, she elaborated that that's one in the same. And by the way, mental health records, especially when it's not a report from the um, mental health specialist, but Amber just saying things, that's not a medical report. Rob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that doesn't constitute a medical report. When you say medical report, we're thinking you have some sort of a doctor who saw physical You, you mean thing. like you might have medical records of a finger getting cut off and an admittance to a hospital and a, a right. surgical Something record? Something like that. Exactly. Those kind of medical records? Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> someone, someone, I feel like someone has that. So when, when she's taking this mental health record and saying, we have medical records, we have mental health records, and she's taking this small thing and stretching it out and misrepresenting it and trying to get more mileage out of this one thing, to me that indicates that even Elaine knows you really didn't have that much. But overall, I think Elaine is a great attorney. Rob, take it away. Uh, the mental or the <laughs> health records. The health records thing. When you talk about a health record, so health records, every every out of court statement that's made that you try to bring into that courtroom to prove the truth of the statement that you're trying to bring in. For example, um, Johnny broke his finger. Okay, if that's in the medical record, that statement is technically speaking hearsay. If you try to bring it into court, you are trying to bring in that out of court statement, something a doctor said, and you're trying to use it in front of the jury to prove to the jury that this is what actually happened. There's a way of getting around the hearsay objection. It's by basically authenticating it as a business record. It's a record that's kept in the ordinary course of business because we, we view those as inherently more trustworthy. Um, but for every layer of hearsay that you have, you have to have an exception. In this particular case, what she's talking about is double hearsay. It's something that Amber told to her provider that then ended up in a record. They're trying to introduce the record but they have not gotten past that first ground of hearsay, which is Amber just saying something. Mm. Just because you say something more than one time doesn't make it any more credible the second time as it was the first time you said it. And the more times that you keep on doing it, it creates an impermissible uh, bolstering of the original statement. The more time the jury hears that statement over and over and over again, especially in the context of a medical record, the jury then thinks, oh, this statement, I should give more weight to it even though I've heard it a it's lot. the yeah, same thing. Exactly. Question so, on that. How in the world did they get away with Dr. Hughes just essentially doing that? Ah, then this was something that I thought was really annoying to me as well. So there's an exception for expert witnesses. Expert witnesses are allowed to testify to hearsay statements to the extent that they use that hearsay to form the foundation of their opinion. Experts are allowed to analyze everything and then they can offer an opinion in front of the court as to what that is. So when those statements were being brought up by Dr. Hughes and Dr. Hughes was an Amber proxy, I hated all of that testimony because it didn't need to happen. It was honestly just, but uh, then again, the call there was, uh, you wouldn't believe Amber, therefore you would immediately discount Dr. Hughes. But when she's testifying, she's saying, all of these hearsay statements helped me to formulate my opinion that Amber was a victim of abuse and that Amber has PTSD as a result of that. She's allowed to do that. And when she's testifying, this is my opinion, she's allowed to say, I relied on this statement, this statement, this statement, this statement, because it's not being offered for the truth of those statements. It's being offered as a supporting figure to her expert opinion. Well, my, my personal opinion, and I'm obviously not trained in law, is that it seems shady as shit. It is. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of my opinion of it as it was going on. I was like, this is bullshit. Wow. OK, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to uh, ask that because it, it I also want to speak. I don't know if we're going to talk about this today at all, but I do want to throw this in. I want to speak to, you know, it's so it's so funny because in the comments of my videos, you know, I always try to be objective when it comes to analysis and I don't let my personal opinions affect my judgment. But no, you text him to me and we have conversations. No, you text him to me and we have conversations about yeah, <laughs> personal exactly. opinions. Because <laughs> that's a vent somewhere. Because I think I think I do need to remain objective and look at each piece of sort of 
interview that we look at objectively. But as this progressed, I saw the true character of Elaine and I saw the true character of Ben Chu. And it's so hard to stay entirely objective because in the analysis I can, but when it comes to like looking at the people, because you have her going on these morning shows and talking about how Johnny's side did this and they did that and they made this into a coliseum and this is, you know, all these kinds of things. And Ben on his interview, when he was asked about Elaine on these interviews, he flat out made excuses for her. He said, you know, well, maybe we'll, she we'll misspoke. She's a great We're going to go into that because I, I want to do a comparison. I have one of his and uh, I definitely, there's a contrast there. Plus, I want yeah, to talk anyway, about his All I want to say is it takes such great, and I'm not even analyzing his behavior. I'm not analyzing his facial expressions, his choice of words, none of that. Just in character, it takes a very big person to look at someone who just slammed him and his team in front of millions and to say, she's a great attorney. Maybe she just misspoke. I, I wouldn't be able to do it. It, it. He's a better man than I. True. Now, Rob, I'm, I'm going to ask, doing these media rounds, like, okay, if you lost the case, in my opinion, the appropriate thing would be we lost the trial. I don't, um, I don't agree with the decision, obviously, and, and we are going to appeal it. We, we feel like there, there were some some mistakes in there, and we're just going to keep fighting the case. We believe in our client, and we believe in what we're doing, and we're going to keep on fighting. And that would be an appropriate response, right? You're not throwing a judge under. You're not throwing anybody else under. You're saying, hey, you know, we're going to keep fighting to get the word out. We want to believe it, rather than what she's doing, which is essentially putting a wrecking ball to everybody. Very similar to Amber. Um, I know you've said it. Barnes has said it. Um, that the the lawyer and the client start to. I think actually you, Rob, that mm -hmm. the um they take on each other's identity. So you're looking at older mm -hmm. Amber. Yeah, I mean she, and this is this is when she came out of these interviews. I came to the conclusion. I I kind of have been sticking with it since then. Um, this is when she stops becoming an advocate and starts becoming a fanatic. And that's mm. there's that distinction is kind of what you see with this behavior. There's a way of answering these questions as an advocate, um, respectfully, and with just as much fervor, just not the same language. This is fanaticism. This is crazy. Yeah, much and much less finger quotes. Yep. All right. There were but a she's number. Heartbroken and she is heartbroken. Video. And one of the first. Video oh, 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 see, that's why I have professionals with me. So how that is she today, Elaine? How is she today? She's what is what is her next move? She's right. Well, her next move is appeal. There were she, that, that stutter trip really makes me think that she doesn't know what the hell Amber's next move is, and I, I question their relationship altogether. And I think I, her I think her script was interrupted. That's what that was. Okay. Heartbroken. Um, she is heartbroken. And one of the first things that she said when she came back from the verdict, when we went into the conference room, was, I am so sorry to all these women. That's I, I, I'm sure. I could just visualize. I've watched Amber's testimony that whole time. And I could totally see that, can't you? That she yeah. would immediately just go, oh, <laughs> as, never as mind she... my loss. Never mind any of this. As I'm Shadow so Baker sorry. said yesterday on Viva Frey's stream. Now, was that before or after she said, what the F just happened? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, good God. I mean, like, I what believe. The, what the, that's what she said. And then Why after that, I have you? Said, I Why did I pay you? Him. What, what are you here for? <laughs> I think, uh, I think Rob done. needs is just yeah, scheduled he's, to he'll be back in a midstream. Yeah, he'll be back. <laughs> yes, she felt like she had let down all of these women because she had more evidence than most people do, and yet they still didn't believe her. Elaine Charleston, Bretta Hoff, thank you so much for joining us. We and you, okay, you brought up um, my friend David, um, Viva Fry, and one of his favorite sayings, I'm not going to say he came up with it, but he uses it more than anybody else, and has a t-shirt, is confession by projection. Mm. And Everything about Amber Heard's case, in my opinion, everything that Elaine has done, in my opinion, is you take the actions and you tell say that the other side is doing it. So, for example, we had mountains of evidence. We had pictures. 
Johnny had mountains of evidence and pictures. We had medical records. Johnny had medical. So if you take it and you just go everything out of her mouth, flip the script, you have accurate statements. Yeah. So I guess this kind of, and it's, and, and it's true of the opposite as well. Like not only what they say about themselves apply to the other team, but all the things they say the other team did, they did. And this goes back to another saying, which is when you point a finger at someone, you're secretly pointing three back to yourself. Who? Because when they're saying things like, you know, they, they turn this into a coliseum, you know, they, they turn this into a public affair. Well, who's the first on the morning shows? You know, you beat them to that. So you're saying they're the ones who made a big charade of this, a big sort of public affair. Yeah, you're the one taking the morning shows and they're not. And, you know, they went on as a response afterwards and they, they, they showed grace and they showed professionalism. And almost everything that I was looking at Elaine and saying, I wish she can do this. Like, I wish she can answer a question straight. I wish she can kind of tip where sort of they went wrong a little or something that they were nervous or scared about. Uh, ben Chu and Camille Vasquez had no problem doing those things to say, you know, we knew that, you know, this was a risk or we knew that, you know, this was going to be a challenge or we, we looked at this and we did that and give straight answers and don't be scared to be vulnerable in front of that camera. Elaine seems to want to just sweep things under the rug and be like, I'm, what, are you, what are you guys talking I don't know what you guys are talking about. I'm just going to go to this other script that I had prepared. And it kind of seems not so genuine. Juvenile. Yeah. It, it is honestly like, if Elaine was a 12-year-old girl, I'd be like, eh, okay, kind of makes sense. Yeah. But and, 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 and the, the, I'm gonna get I might get attacked for this. The bottom line is, and Rob, like if you can just calm down for just one second, and I know this is like against my own mission to piss you off, but <laughs> Elaine is not on paper. Take take away what she's doing here, what she's doing on these morning shows, what we've seen from her in this case. Elaine is not a bad lawyer. And I don't even know if she's a bad person. I don't think she's a bad person. I think this is just what's happening because of this case, because of having to defend a woman where I think even Elaine knows there really isn't much to stand on to defend her. So she asked, I use the word fidelity, but Rob said, you know, fealty is the right word here, where whatever you want to call it is increasing towards Amber because she knows she doesn't have legs to stand on. And again, I talked about this in my video and we talked about it last week, our alliances increase towards people when the more we become aware that there isn't much to stand on. Because when all we have is our faith, we double down on our faith. And I think that Elaine is really upset at the media because, and, and the fact that this was covered publicly because she knows that we now all have seen her defend Amber and she's committed to that standpoint. So now she has to go on these morning shows and defend that position. And I think she's aggravated because it's a hard position to defend. And all she has is her faith in that position. And I think there's a lot of psychology going on here that explains well, it's a her sunk cost fallacy seeming to be willing to about. die on this hill. Well, it's a sunk cost fall fallacy we were talking about. Sunk cost uh, fallacy, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you get into cognitive dissonance because nothing lines up. You just double down harder and harder and harder and pound the table. I mean, she made the mistake of... So I run into this with a lot of young attorneys. Um they become, they become personally invested. And you see it a lot in domestic relations practice where the attorney forgets the role they play. Um, they forget that they are supposed to be an advocate, but also they're supposed to be the calm head in the room. They're supposed to be the one that can see things from both sides and argue a certain point on both sides, right? Elaine is demonstrating personal investment in the outcome of this case. When, when people attack Amber or they attack the outcome, she she responds as, as if they're attacking her. Um, and it's a very, not to say it's a rookie mistake, but I, I can't imagine that in any other case in her in her history, going back several years, that she has become personally invested like to this extent. So I just think it's maybe that she was way, 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 way too close to this case on her personal Stakes and emotional were level. High. Stakes yep. were so high on this. So, I mean, look, look, uh, tale of two lawyers. She likes talking about the tale of two trials. I'll talk about the tale of two lawyers. You have Camille, who's now partner, hottest thing out there. Hollywood, everybody is chasing her. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If Elaine had pulled this out, that would have been her. Right? And now she's just trying to, I feel like, rescue any kind of victory out of this, you know, be it um, uh, an appeal, be it to get the money knocked down. You know, she's just trying to grab 
any, you know, she, she could pull this out. Damn it. She could pull it out. Kids. I think I can beat this train. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I don't know if you have seen those uh, driver's education videos. Yeah. 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 Uh, she's, uh, yeah. She's, she's leveraging the last bit of credibility that she has and the last bit of respect that a lot of people have for her. And that's kind of sad to watch personally. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I think what you're both saying is completely accurate. I think she's really attached to that outcome of winning. And I think she, I think she has won a lot of cases before. And she was like, I want to feel that glory, but on this scale, and she's really attached to that victory. And now she has no idea how to get it. So she's just desperately grasping at straws. Sad. All right. So let's look at the other side. We've got the depressing moment. And uh, this is uh, from the court TV feed. Um, ben Chu responding to Elaine's specific claims. I want to talk about uh, Heard's lead attorney, Elaine Bredhoff. She made some posts. See, lead attorney. That's what I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. verdict interviews as well uh, last week in fact i was supposed to sit down with her she had to cancel last minute uh, something urgent in court uh, we haven't yet rescheduled but that offer is obviously still out there for her but i want to give you the opportunity to address some of the things that she did say uh, last week to the media uh, she claims that your team demonized uh, amber heard and suppressed evidence what's your response i think it's disappointing that she would say something like that with respect to suppression of evidence there was a lot more evidence that came in in fairfax county now, he has a weird tick and i didn't get a chance to watch the whole thing spidey i don't know if you did but there's a debt now and i don't know if that is his baseline but what what's going on there so there's two things and i actually called chase about this earlier there's two things there first of all is the right eyebrow that's like this just stuck there. That's not a conscious gesture. I mean, nobody that I know of can bring just that upper corner of one eyelid up there while perfectly controlling the other one on moments of reaction while this one stays up there. So we have that. Then we have these sort of little jolts and heavy blinks. Now we have seen heavy blinking from him in the courtroom as well. Oh, there's another thing as well. When he's listening, tightness in the lips is baseline for him. And this is in the courtroom as well. When he's sitting there, he's got this sort of kind of tight lip, sort of flat smile. That's his baseline. Plus this, plus these heavy blinks that we're seeing here that we did see in the courtroom, but not as much as this. I can't diagnose. I don't have the credentials to diagnose. And even if I did, I wouldn't do that based on a video. To me as a behavior analyst, the only thing that's important is that's baseline. So these heavy blinks, if I saw somebody talking normally and they're just blinking normally, and all of a sudden we see these sort of heavy blinks, I might question that and be like, why are we getting this? Is it eye blocking? Is it a to alleviate stress? Are his eyes drying out? Maybe. But he's got this right off the get-go. That's up there. We've got these heavy blinks. I think, you know, Rob always says that um, clients choose attorneys based on who they are because this is who's going to represent them in the courtroom. Um, I believe that Johnny's an introvert. Johnny shows certain signs of getting very flustered when there's too much attention on him. I know it's ironic saying that given what he does for a living, sure, sure. but we do see that. I think he likes big audiences when it's controlled and he feels like he has control, but I don't think he likes the attention that much. Ironic, I know, but I do feel that. I feel it's the same for Ben Chu. I don't think he likes the public eye. At some point, I don't know if it's in this interview or later on in the same clip, he talks about how him and Camille are now like big public names and he says, you know, I didn't expect this at all for both of us to get this. And Camille is handling it really well, I think. So he excludes himself from the list of people who are handling this well. I don't think he likes the public attention. We're seeing a lot of stiffness here. Every now and then the illustrators come up, but not that often. So I think these are all just signs of him being nervous. I think it could be something else, but I, I don't want to diagnose. Right. I mean, yeah. Watch, uh, watch the intensity of the blinks when he's alone versus the intensity of the blinks when he's next to Camille. The intensity, yeah. not the speed, the intensity, how hard the blink comes. And there's a head nod. And then um, also Spidey mentioned his baseline. One thing he does frequently after almost every question, you'll see him look up into the, up into the left, I think, his left, up into the left. He is constantly thinking about the question that's being asked of him and formulating an answer. That's where he goes when he's he's – organizing the words of what he heard and how he responds. And then in the next interview, there's one question 
I, I'm saying it now because I'm going to forget when we get there. There's one question that's asked of him, and you'll see an upward look to the right, and it's a recall, and he's thinking about Elaine Bredehoff making statements in court in a certain moment. It's, I only say it now because I'm going to forget it when we get there. I want to throw this in as well. Great points, Rob. Fully agree. Um, he doesn't have pre-recorded scripts like Elaine, but he does have certain words that he decided to use in these answers. And one of them is inappropriate. Yep. Yep. Good catch. By, by, by the way, um, I see people saying Tourette's in the chat. I will not throw Tourette's out as a diagnosis without any kind of yeah. a knowledge. And I, I won't even make that assumption. It's a very Listen. rare thing for somebody to have Tourette's. Um, and it, it, I, I think it's very dangerous to just say, oh, that's Tourette's. No. Yeah. Look, can, can it be, can Tourette's manifest this way? Yes. Sure. Do we have enough evidence in these videos no. to diagnose that? No. No. And I, I would I would say it's unlikely even. Always possible, but I think it's unlikely. I just I think it's his anxiety. That's sure. it. That's that's my thought. I do too. Ever came in in London. And I, I took that uh, as not being complimentary of our judge, who is a wonderful judge. I, I don't think I just think that's an improper characterization. As far as demonization, the cross examination of Miss Heard that was done, I believe, beautifully by Camille Vasquez, was not intended to demonize her. It really was predicated on her own words. So the cross examination was based on statements that Miss Heard had made and presenting her with some audios that she herself had made and really asking for her explanation. I don't think that's demonization. I think that's cross examination. Right. She points to. Is it Love me or is this. Are, are his blinks a little bit harder because while he's responding, essentially to attacks on him? I, and I don't, I don't know if that you know be a little bit of eye blocking. In, in I think it's, I think it's nerves. Look at his eyes; they dart left to what I imagine is the other camera that's looking, and then they dart to Chanley, and they dart left, and they dart there. There's an anxiety, and then watch him take a couple of gulps, or a couple of um, swallows to help. Yeah. It's he's Hard. trying to calm himself down. He is trying to calm himself down and and make sure and focus on Chanley, who's asking the questions. So that's that's all I read into that. Okay. To medical records, uh, text messages from Stephen Duders, things like that. Would that have made a difference? Can you enlighten us on? I don't believe any of the evidence that was excluded, and there was evidence excluded on both sides. And you're very familiar. There are rules of evidence that exactly. apply. Not everything comes in. Right. Yeah, and suppression may not be the best word, too, that she uses, right? It's inadmissible because of hearsay or they're it's not relevant. Exactly. And I, I think that I think her honor. Is that Camille in the background? What? Is that Camille in the background? I hear another female voice saying it's not relevant. Let, 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 listen, let me back it up. Be the best word, too, that she uses, right? It's inadmissible because of hearsay or. They're it's not relevant. Exactly. And I, I think that I think her honor. No, it's the interviewer. She's adding to her Oh, that's question. weird. You know what? Yeah, it's feeding Chandler. him on a different microphone. Exactly. And they just cut to his mic, so we're still hearing her complete her question. But well, what threw me off is, let's go back, because I heard an, a, another voice while she was talking, and I think it was actually her being picked up on his microphone with some bleed. I don't know, but it was kind of throwing me off. But I'm going to go back. I just want to see if you hear it word too that she uses right it's inadmissible because of hearsay or they're it's not relevant exactly yeah, and i i think that i think her honor you know played it right down the middle was very consistent in her rulings and i i think it's an improper characterization and perhaps she just misspoke sure okay another thing uh, elaine said that this verdict is a huge setback for women uh, thinking about reporting domestic violence would send a message that they cannot win what's your team's did response you check, i think that's did you entirely. catch something in chanley asking that question by the way yeah she doesn't like it at all no but she's excited she's interested to ask it like oh, well yeah she, because like, i mean this is the this is my boss this is what she wants to get to she looks down oh, at her yeah. notes and sees it's the next question and, and she's smiles. like oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah definitely well but she's like this is the headline this is the sound bite yeah. i mean it, oh, it's all we're working it's a characterization and perhaps she just missed sure okay another thing uh elaine and she rushes to it and disappointed with the answer yeah, yeah. well that last one 
Clinton said that this verdict is a huge setback for women uh, thinking about reporting domestic violence would send a message that they cannot win. What's your team's response? I think that's entirely untrue. And Mr. Depp would want people to come forward if they were victims of domestic abuse. So I don't think this is a setback at all for women or men who have been victimized by domestic abuse. And I appreciate he said, or men, because we, we always, everybody seems to overlook that, that, you know, it, it's always like, oh, this is a setback for women, setback for women. It's like, no, it, it's, it, you could flip the script and say, it's a victim who got his day in court. And uh, yeah. I find it frustrating. And I think this is a, I think this is a victory for truth. I think that's, I, I don't think it's a setback at all. Elaine also pointed to the jury as possibly even being tainted by the masses of amount of media. This was all over social media, as you probably know, and even blaming the cameras in the courtroom for possibly tainting this verdict. What do you think? That was almost more disappointing than her statement about evidence being kept out because I construed that as an affront to the jury. I mean, the jury took an oath, as you know, not to look at social media. And there's no basis that the jury violated their oath. And these are people, and you saw them every day, who gave up six weeks of their lives, of their work, of their family, to pay attention not only to the evidence that Mr. Depp put forward, but also to the evidence Ms. Heard put forward. And to cast a shadow on them, I think, was really unfortunate and and disappointing. Yeah, there was a. Oh, well, he wanted to say something else. <laughs> mm -hmm. there, he does the. He does the. He does the. There's so many differences between the way he speaks and the way Elaine speaks. He'll take every opportunity to make the answer about other people. She'll take every opportunity to make the answer about herself. So mm -hmm. you know, she'll often say things like, "Oh, and I tried to get rid of those cameras, and I, you know, and I looked at my closing, and I." He like right here, he's talking about, you know, like there's a lot of opportunity here for him to go. And I, you know, and I fought this and I thought that and I think this and I think it should have been this way. And but he's talking about, you know, how Camille it's dismissive to the jury to say way. that because, you know, they were taken away from their work and their family. The other thing I like about Ben Chu is this. It's not just when he's answering, but when he's hearing the questions, when he's being and we don't see it here because the camera was on the interviewer, but we see it in other interviews. When he's being asked, like, so, you know, you heard Elaine get on these shows and say this, this, this. We don't see contempt, condescension, or anything. Eye rolling, nothing on his face when these things are being said. Typically, you would expect somebody asking you, like, so Elaine said that, you know, the jury was this, this, this. The moment that comes up, you would expect someone to go, oh, here we go, or, like, roll the eyes or see a bit of that contempt. You don't see it. He just patiently waits for the question to end, and he answers with grace. And it's one thing to really mitigate that emotion leaking through while you're answering, it's another thing to not react to it when the question is being asked. And I think it makes him look really professional. I'm yeah. going to age myself, and, but he has a Jimmy Stewart vibe. Mm. Uh, so I, I'm going to jump off of what Spidey was saying here about the how he talks about everyone else. I love that you picked up on that. I really do. Because the way I've explained Ben Chu is that he's like a manager in baseball. Um, mm. So... For example, how many people, how many of the high profile witnesses did you see Ben Chu examine? Not he didn't really. examine Johnny Depp. He didn't examine, he didn't examine Amber Heard. He didn't do any of that. So he's a manager in baseball. Think of playoffs, playoff baseball, right? It's a pitcher's battle. You have to have the right pitcher on the mound for the right batter at the right time for the right game. And he is a master at that. He doesn't want the, the spotlight on him but he wants to pick the person who's going to pitch to that all-star hitter and try to end up winning the game in that way. He's a master strategist and he loves the light not being on him. So he's not up there at the podium asking the questions, but he's picking the people that are up there. And when you see the pride that he exhibits towards Camille in the next interview, you see the pride. It's something where that is his own internal reward. How amazing it is for him to feel that he chose the right pitcher to face that batter. You know, I'm, I'm going to jump on that a little bit, too. Um, he actually does take the limelight for one thing. And that was his spot is when he argued that they could not dismiss this case. 
Yep. Because he jumped forward saying, this is my team. And that was the point where he came in. So he lets his team do the shining, but then that was a threat against the team. And he jumped forward in between that threat and them. Would that be a fair analysis? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have the, do you have the monopoly clip? <gasps> Uh, I don't, but I can find Dang it. it. If you, just send it to me. I mean, I'll find it. I'll find Statement it. Statement even recently that Herd's team released. I'm sure you've also read this, but I want to get your take. The spokesperson for Amber says it is as unseemly as it is unprofessional that Johnny Depp's legal team oh. has chosen to do. How long are you going to let me go? Sorry, buddy. <laughs> I'm sitting there. I, I was just, I was just replaying I, I was, certain things in my head from Elaine because I'm doing comparatives in my head. No, I mean, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm trying world. to stealthily look up uh, another clip <laughs> while this is going, and uh, obviously. Saw them every day who gave up six weeks of their lives, of their work, of their family, to pay attention not only to the evidence that Mr. Depp put forward, but also to the evidence Ms. Heard put forward. And to cast a shadow on them, I think, was really unfortunate and, and disappointing. Yeah, there was a statement even recently that Herd's team released. I'm sure you've also read this, but I want to get your take. The spokesperson for Amber says it is as unseemly as it is unprofessional that Johnny Depp's legal team has chosen to do a victory lap for setting back decades of how women can be treated in the courtroom. What's next? A movie deal and merchandising. That was the latest statement. What's your response to that? The response to that was one day after the verdict, I believe it was one day after the verdict, Ms. Greta Hoft appeared on national programs uh, to set forth Ms. Hurd's position. So this is a, a response to that. That's the first time we see him get a little, his cadence get a little bit more sort of jabby, a little bit more like, oh, no, uh, no, no. It's just, it, it's not much, it's subtle. Uh, lesser men would be a lot more on tilt than him, but that's the first time we see sort of a bit of impatience in his tone. Right. Yeah, there's the there's the catch in the statement. He does the and then he finishes the statement. It's like he has to kind of check himself as he's doing it. All right, and let's see. I found a um, version of the Monopoly clip. Yeah, he talks about it on Court TV and on Law and Crime. He talked about the Monopoly thing twice. Oh, I, I found somebody who did a short, so hopefully Great. we don't... Talk about Perfect. The so the announcement of the verdict comes down. Was there just a mad dash in your camp? Uh-oh, wait, wait, what's happening? Um, we were so tense that one of my colleagues brought a Monopoly game. So we played Monopoly in our little breakout room, and I saw a side of some of my young colleagues that I'd never seen before, a ruthlessness, <laughs> an, an unwillingness to sell their old mentor some, some property. Um, but the second we heard that the jury was coming in, of course, we folded up the game. And um, then it was just our hearts were in our mouths, especially when the judge called us forward and told us that the jury had reached a verdict on liability as to one of the statements, but had not filled in the damages award. We had no idea whether that was one of the counterclaim statements that Ms. Heard had alleged uh, or one of our statements. So, and she, as always, Chief Judge Escarati, you know, played it down the middle. We had no idea. So we had a torturous several minutes while we were waiting for the jury to do that. Talk about the verdict. So the announcement of the verdict. Comes you can stop it. That was, that's, that's, the, that's the heart of it. Like, how freaking perfect is that? He doesn't say I a single time in that entire phrase. He says we. He talks about monopoly. And then he immediately does the little uh, deprecating, the self-deprecating argument of how oh, they kicked boy. his butt into monopoly. It's everything is about the team. 100% in that entire narrative. There is not a single selfish bone in that man's body when he's talking about that. Yeah, he um, definitely com comes across that way. Um, I keep wanting to say managing partner in a sense like um, somebody who literally is in the background and, and just making sure everybody, everything gets done, but is maybe the wise person in the office. It's almost like a fatherly quality. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so which, which, um, if we want to look with him and Camille, what would be the right play the one with the, the oh, today's today's good. Have it. I yeah, haven't done my deep dive yet, I'm going to film tonight, so I'm going to take a couple of hours to like really look at it in depth. But uh, 
first impressions or oh first impressions I'm, i'll take what i can get i mean i, I don't want to rob from the channel let's see oh i gotta get some super chats done actually you know what <laughs> I, I better do super chats, <laughs> do super chats. Uh, eric's too excited he's loving the conversation too much well you know it it, it does it breaks up the flow and i i, I want it to be you know beneficial and good for everybody but I mean, people are investing too, so it's kind of mm -hmm. hard. Um, Dr. Industry Rajan, I believe you reached out to me, and I've got to um, hopefully I remember I find the email again. Hi, everyone. Love your commentary and chemistry with each other. I absolutely agree. Um, I feel EB was very incendiary, unprofessional, sour <laughs> grapes. This is coming from a psychologist here. Um, takes courage to be a juror on such a huge trial. Happy birthday, JD. By the way, Spidey, she is a hypnotist. I, I went to look up her video and she was speaking at like this major hypnotist convention or, or whatever. Awesome. So. so cool. Right up your alley. Very cool. Pleasure to meet you. Rob, can the court take measures against Amber's PR team if they're found creating media to influence the judgment? Yes, they have the power to. I don't know whether they will and I have no idea whether they have. That's going to be a motion. It's going to be pretty quiet. All right. Dream Team. Thank you very much, Artist Eleven. Um, Elaine is also a narcissist or uh, doing it for the money. I think we give our opinion on that one. Yeah. About her motivations. Uh, you're all great. I enjoy the humor, sarcasm, and candor. Informative as heck. I agree. Sarcasm. These guys are great. Sarcasm? I've been literal this whole time. God. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Uh this knucklehead actually sat there and wrote a post. It was a community post or what was it? The same. I went to the Webster's dictionary. I looked up the meaning of literally because I'm a Rachel Maddow fan. <laughs> and, and he's saying that literally really means figuratively. So literally is actually figuratively in that even kind of ignoring that the first definition is literally means this is that quite literally. Are you Eric, talking about I'm my lost. post? Yeah. You Spidey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You know what? You know what? That's a mean thing to say because I was just talking about people who correct me when I use literally as figuratively. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. In the dictionary, it says it can be used in that sense. Okay. I'll tell you what. You, you, you should hire um, Rachel Maddow's legal team because she actually won a defamation case by stating that when she says literally, she means figuratively and she won. There you go. And, and she's somebody who was on a news network because she said that the individual is like literally a uh, puppet of Russia. I mean, it was really a slanderous statement, uh, however mm. you look at it. But it was ruled in her favor. So go figure. And she's an opinion show. I would start to get pretty distressed if a news anchor said it, though. Yeah. That would start to get a little. Yeah. No, um, why, why are we skipping the last question? I want to oh, take did it. I? Oh, see. Eric, oh. focus. Eric, focus. Eric, come I'm, on, I'm man. sorry. I, I got one. stressed out. I, I had a Rob moment. Oh, here we go. Uh, critics call behavior analysis pseudoscience. It's how psychics fake being psychics. Now, I've got to throw something out there that is going to irritate a lot of people. Do you know what another pseudoscience is, if you really dig into it? Psychology. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't get all head up on it because... You know, okay, uh, behavior, you know, body language is a pseudoscience. Uh -huh. Yes. So are lie detectors or polygraphs. Well, That's a pseudoscience. You know what? At, at so the are risk chiropractors. Of, at the risk of uh, Rob literally ending our friendship, can you scientifically tell me what makes a great lawyer, Rob? No, it's not possible. There's, exactly. too, there's too many things. There's too many factors. You, Anything you, that has a human element to it isn't going to be scientific. There are no blacks and whites. But I don't think, to be fair, I don't think Charles is calling it a pseudoscience. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm yelling critics at critics. Critics call it a pseudoscience, and they do, yes. And if that's the word they want to use to quantify or, or qualify art, then yeah. And that's why my channel is called The Behavioral Arts, not The Behavioral Sciences, because there's nuance there, and there's experience there, and there's interpretation there. Um, yeah, art is typically not very scientific. So, but the rest of the question is that how psychics fake being psychic? So, I don't know how many of the followers here know, but my main career for over a decade has been a mentalist. And what is a mentalist? A mentalist is someone who uses a lot of the same techniques that psychics use, but instead of claiming that 
we can read your mind or talk to like people who have passed, we entertain. So it's a form of magic that is meant for entertainment. But I do cold readings and I do all kinds of the same stuff psychics do. And that's where I use a lot of these skills that I have, body language, behavior analysis, to really make it seem like I'm connecting with people and I know what they're thinking. And I've done this on television. I've done this all over stages, all over the world. I do massive tours. And yeah, it's, that, it's a big part of how I can convince people that I'm in their heads, except for at the end of the day, I will always say, ladies and gentlemen, what you're witnessing here is trickery. It's entertainment. None of this is real because that's where I feel I need to be honest with my audience. But yeah, um, analysis well, I does would say play you do that. that too. Pardon? I'd say you do that in the courtroom too. You will shape information and make statements oh, to make a witness yeah. feel like you're in their head. Yeah, it's theater. Courtroom is, and people don't be mad at this. When yes, the courtroom is a big place and the high stakes, and yes, you're trying to get to the truth of things, but it's also very theatrical. And you need to create a certain environment in order to allow witnesses to testify truthfully, honestly, and in order for the judge to actually feel emotions that were felt six months ago when this thing first happened. Natalie in the comments says that she's a nurse and they practice art and science. And I think that's a great point. Something as sort of scientific as medicine also has a lot of art, you know, in the way that you connect with the patient, I'm assuming is what she means. Or she has a lot of other instances, I'm sure, where her judgment or her intuition are going to come into play when it comes to treatment or when it comes to even diagnosis. I'm not really sure, but I can guarantee that almost anything that involves human to human interaction is not going to be very scientific. I would also, I always like to use the analogy with everyone that um, cooking is an art and baking is a science and everybody has to eat. And if you think about it, cooking, you just, you throw things together, you get throw a little of this, oh, it doesn't taste salty enough or it doesn't, and you throw more in. You can't do that as much with baking because if you don't put enough yeast in, it doesn't rise. If you don't put the baking soda, you know, it falls. So there are actual um, barriers in there, but yet both will fill you and both are you know, beneficial for the soul. Um, according to an AH fan on TikTok, people like me who have experienced DADV who support JD have been brainwashed by propaganda from the media and you're angry. And you know what? I, I would argue that those same people are victimizing you further quite, quite possibly. And I'm sorry for that. You know, if you tell some people that and, and then they mock you and it, that, that's horrible. Super sticker from Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah from Australia. Hi tomorrow. Um, Nua Hendrix, Spidey Rob, Eric, love you guys. Keep up the awesome contents. Waited all day for this live. I did too. Oh, oh wow, it, it's yeah. almost tomorrow. No, it is tomorrow there. Happy tomorrow in South Africa. Happy tomorrow. Happy tomorrow. Um, when I think of Elaine, I think of Umbridge. I get confused when I hear Elaine. But, yeah. Um, where do you guys start learning about legitimately reading body language? Seems like a field with a lot of fraudulent info and gurus to sift through. Start with the behavior panel. I would recommend any of the books that they have written. Greg Hartley alone has written 10 books. Now, if you want to go super deep into it, and Spidey will, will correct me, but um, Joe Navarro and, um, well, Joe Navarro is probably a great place to start because Ekman starts to get really, really deep and nerdy on micro expressions. But I would do like a Greg Hartley um, book or so, Scott's got a really nice, very approachable, thin book, um, very new uh, Scott Rouse, and he'll be on next week. Fantastic, fantastic book to go by. Don't go straight to the ellipsis manual from Chase Hughes because that's like going to a graduate degree. Go to six minute x ray if you're going to start on him. But if you just want to say, hey, uh, can I get general principles? I, I think Scott's book might be a, an ideal start. So it's a great start. There are three places you could start for, for if you count Hartley. Hartley stuff also like. There are times where, like, because Hartley's brilliant. Hartley's so freaking smart and he has so much information in his head. Um, so his books have great information, but in terms of organization of information, I think Understanding Body Language by Scott Rouse is freaking amazing. Uh, what Everybody is Saying by Joe Navarro, freaking amazing. And Alan and Barbara Pease also mm. have some great stuff. The definitive book of Body Language, I believe it's called. Anyways, Alan Pease, Barbara Pease, Greg Hartley, Scott Rouse, um, and Joe Navarro, amazing, amazing literature on body language. Yeah, oh, there we go. The um, Pease book right here. Is that is that called? 
the definitive, this is the, the definitive book, but I, I, I'd say it's starting to get a little more advanced yet. I know I like Scott because it's got pick, you know, it's very, very um, picture driven. Yeah, six minute crazy. x ray. Sorry to cut you off. People are saying it in the chat. Six minute x ray by Chase is also freaking incredible. Obviously, I'm biased because Chase is like not only one of my closest friends, but also one of my earliest teachers in this field. Um, six minute x ray is a phenomenal book. But the question was about body language and six minute x-ray has a lot of like sort of behavior analysis in there as well, not just the body language, but right. in terms of behavior analysis and profiling, you're not going to find a better book than six minute x-ray. Yeah. Six, six minute x-ray is more of a multi-channel discipline type of a, a deal, but then that's chase because yeah. the chase is uh, very deep in that. Um, Amber said Johnny couldn't look at her because he was guilty with DADB. Is it, hard for true victims to look abusers in the eye yes i i can imagine so but i i can't you know i can't answer that you know it's hard for them to look anybody in the eye when they're when they're talking about the abuse they can't look at anybody when they're talking about the actual abuse in the moment makes sense okay dr um industry industry i think it's industry i hope kind of like industry without a t rahan um, great analysis and loving this. I would like love to talk to you guys about parallels between um, behavioral, analysis. Be behavioral analysis and um, Q and A and transference, counter transference, and therapy. Yeah, I, I'm sure that'd be fascinating. Spidey, you've got a degree. Um, I'm sure that you can go really deep into that. Yeah, social psychology, and also I forget to mention this sometimes, but you know, I, I was a practicing hypnotherapist. I'm uh, certified in hypnosis, so. Yeah, it's interesting. I've, I've never quite thought about the parallels between behavior analysis and transference. It's a really interesting thought. Really interesting thought. I, I got to marinate. You got him going. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, matching Chase's donation. Hey. All right. Thank you. Um, here we go. Fighting fair is a dig, right? Tell him it was a fair fight and see what the judge and jury think. Hmm. Um, Elaine, read hearsay rules instead of your closings, please. <laughs> uh, on this versus the UK trial, I disagree. When we discuss something recent or here, we tend to point down. When we think of that, we point to side. I, I'm going to point out you're talking about I axis and cues, and yeah. it depends because one of the reasons NLP gets into trouble is they have set charts that say everybody always looks up left to do this, down right to do that. No, everybody has their place that they look, yeah. but my place could be center right or center left. I don't even know what it is. Yeah, and somebody also, else by the way, down left. important to note that the guys who came up with the eye accessing cues, which is uh, uh, Richard Bandler and John Grinder, redacted yeah. that. They eventually said it's not reliable. And that, they, look, there are giant generalizations. And I think Hartley has some of the best work on this to where mm -hmm. inner monologue tends to be downwards like this because we go inwards. That makes sense. Recall usually bounces up around here. And I say usually, and that's a huge usually because it's different for other people. I've seen people who recall looking straight forward. I've seen people who recall this way, sideways or downwards. And some people say, oh yeah, but sideways is auditory recall up here is we're not, no, we're not that, we're part. not that simple. People come up with different ways to do things. So no, that's that. And I don't like people, I'm sorry, I don't want to pick on your subscribers, but people who like speak in fact like this, as opposed to saying I've heard or like my opinion is, that what this comment is just factually false. Whether you disagree or not doesn't matter. When we discuss something recent or here, we do not tend to point down. That is not correct. Mm -hmm. And sorry, but I'm going to have to pull rank on this one. I've been reading people on stage <laughs> for more than 15 years. So yeah. No, I'm just going to point out that Greg Hartley, who is probably the biggest proponent of I-axis and cues out there and, and knowing it, always you will see him talks to people and ask them certain questions, a series of questions to note, okay, now they're describing their drive home and they have to visualize what they drive by on the way home. He notes that. And then he'll ask another question. It'd be an emotional and then it'd be another. So he then tracks that all that. Then he says, okay, this person goes wherever it is when they do this. He doesn't say it's any particular place. He's saying this person does it here. And that part is true that a person tends to do the same place every time, but everybody has their own place. More or less. Some people will deviate from that because, you know, they might, 
they might be thinking about something and a sound comes into their head that you didn't sure. know would be there. So something different might happen or they might get a visual that might shift it. So yeah, but, but getting that baseline is way, way, way more dependable than just having these generalizations of like people look down when they do this and left when they do that. None of that works. Yeah. It's, I and mean, I, <laughs> I, I know you're frustrated with that, but that, that is something Well, they did the studies with the soldiers and all that, that it disproved it, but then there were problems with studies and that's the other issue. And I, I've actually had on one of the biggest skeptics in the world on this channel. I please check it out. Aldert Vray and it's spelled V R I G V R I J. And his first name is Aldert with a D, but he has been on the channel preeminent expert um, out of England professor watch that interview he is highly skeptical of all this but i've also had another gentleman on john johnson who talks about all the studies that people are doing and the one factor you will find with most studies is the participants are grad students who want beer and pizza money so you have to note who is actually being studied and that's part of the reason the milgram experiment is one of the greatest experiments that's ever been done because they did it not only with the college kids that wanted beer money, but they actually went to hotel rooms and they went in different places and they got different people and they found a consistency with different ages, different um, walks of life and things like that. And that is why that one has stood up versus the Stanford experiment, yep. which has had some big problems. And I and know again, it's quite a year again, that. Go, going back to what I was saying earlier, how do you really, really test something that has that much human element to it? Again, is can we do a study to see what the best, most effective way is to be a lawyer? No, there's too much that comes into play. And yet I could tell you with certainty that Rob is an incredible lawyer. Uh, so there are factors at play, but to test that is really, really difficult. A lot of things come into play. The environment, the, the person being studied, the person doing the studying, the, the biases. The, so we take the studies that show us how people tend to behave and we use as much as we can, which is why we look for clusters. We don't look for isolated behaviors. One thing rarely means anything. So, and then experience comes into play. So many different things come into play, but yeah, big generalizations is a big no, no. All right. So moving on to another <laughs> comment. Got a lot of Elaine makes too many arguments. Volume is not necessarily convincing fewer, but more thought through points are more persuasive. I, you know, I'm going to defend her on that. If you're served up a, a plate of turds, you're going to try to find pieces of corn. <laughs> and sometimes you have to go through a lot, a lot of turds to get there. <laughs> oh, Hunley. <laughs> God, man. I haven't eaten dinner the yet. Of the stream? I haven't eaten dinner yet. The oh. analogy holds up, does it not? Look. I'm friends with uh, Viva Fry. He hates bad analogies. I think that one's a, a spot on. No, that's analogy. a great analogy. <laughs> you, you, you nailed the kernel on that one. <laughs> but a bum. All right. Oh God. Okay. You know, but yeah. Honestly, if you're if you're doing a lot of garbage, I mean, you probably have to throw a lot of chaff out there to say, "Oh no, look at this. Oh no, look at that." And while you're sitting there yeah, parsing through it, you're going, "Oh no, but look at this." So I kind of get it. She's it's not just, effective. Uh, but yeah, true. <laughs> or, or it could be effective if the right person is doing it, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> Samantha, Samantha Bamanta says, I'm just tuning in and I get turds with corn. Like what a strange time to tune in. <laughs> yeah, man, you chose the wrong time. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got an editor is probably going to pull that sound clip. You'll see it again. I bet. Um, Claudia Hardison. Uh, do you think Amber's team will settle instead of appeal and then try to spin it as Johnny's team settle because they are afraid to lose? I could see that happening. He's, I don't know that he gives a damn that much about the money. I could see him just saying, okay, you, I beat you. I beat you badly. We drop it and shut up. And then of course they'll say, well, you know, you know, let them save face. But I don't know, Rob, you've, you're better at this. Media is spinning it up already. I think the, I think Johnny, the best move for his legal team is to say, put your money where your mouth is. You want to appeal, you buy that transcript. That's going to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars for the transcript alone, just for that transcription. You want to appeal, let it rip. We'll win on appeal. I, I cause the meat, the thing is the media is backing the whole negotiated settlement thing. 
they're trying to push this. I, I don't know if you've seen all the headlines talking. Oh yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's okay. crazy. What I would love, and this maybe this is just me trying to be kind and get good things out of it, is if he said something like two things: if you pay the bills, you if you pay the pledges that you actually made, and you drop the appeal, we're done. Yeah, that would be a mic are, drop. Those are I mean, think two, about that. Two non-starters. That's the thing. There's no there's no situation where they come into it and the ultimatums with both of them. I just can't see it. Could be, could be. I, I have hope for humanity. I know Spidey. Georgina, thank you, thank you so much, and thank you, thank you all for your support last time. Just a note: I've lost all respect for Elaine. She's humiliating herself. I find it hard to believe she will not be reprimanded for accusing the jury, the judge, and the other lawyers. I, probably not. I have a feeling, Rob, you know better. If anything, it'll be private. The judge doesn't want to add to the fire. I wouldn't want to go in front of that judge again if I were her. Heck no. <laughs> uh, there's a clear line, a uh, clear divide in levels of class between Mr. Chu and Elaine. I agree. And then Elaine fighting for a paycheck. Kind of, kind of. I mean, you gave some great, you know, advice for Amber. Yeah, um, Amber, your attorney's fees that you owe to Elaine, uh, they're dischargeable in bankruptcy. So talk to a bankruptcy attorney. You can't discharge Johnny's. You can't discharge that judgment, but you might discharge the fees to your attorneys. There you go. Question, as people of your respective professions, how incredible was it to watch the choreography of attorney versus witness um, versus over witness type play in the trial? Yeah, this is that's where that's the comment I made about Ben Chu being the manager, the baseball manager that throws out the pitcher in the right moment to face the right batter. It was beautifully done. And, and did you learn a lot of mechanics in that? What about the mechanics of of the trial How? that you're, you're, you're going to take into your own firm later? I'm just curious. No, I, I don't think I learned anything from the mechanics of it. I thought that it was reinforcing a lot of the judgment calls that I had about putting Camille up there. Look, everyone, mm. everyone talks about how Camille is this powerhouse, and she is. She's a powerhouse, but she's also remarkably effective because she's nervous AF. She doesn't like the spotlight. There's a there's a shake to her voice when she's saying some of these things that comes off as remarkably endearing, but also powerful and that much more powerful, given the fact that you as a witness to this are understanding that she is overcoming all of this anxiety because that's how important the message is to her. It's I a think, remarkably effective. I don't tactic. think she is. I think she became one. I think we watched her becoming yeah. I mean, the powerhouse. We're we are watching the Camille origin story. If you're a comic, that's a good take. Person. Yeah, that's a really good take because you look at how nervous she is in the very beginning, and look how confident she is in that redirect on the rebuttal in the rebuttal case. So um, I agree, she is one now, but I think she became before our eyes, and then that that was part of the beauty. Um, can Elaine be held accountable for anything she's saying about the jury and social media, Rob? Yes, she can. Is she? I don't know. All right. Secret McSquirrel, who is a mod uh, for Nathan Lawyer. Others, I've made um, Secret McSquirrel a mod here. We have a career in common, Spidey. Which one? Yes, I know. I'm Magic. Like, very, very interesting. Analysis, hypnosis. Well, and... you were talking about um, your stage work. Mentalism. So I'm wondering if... Um, McSquirrel here is undercover as a magician. Chill. Uh, this trial got me turned on to behavior analysis, interrogation, and law. Thanks for all your all three YouTube channels. Well, thank, thank you. you. And, thank you. And I'm yeah. really, really glad you like that. Hey, guys. Rob, your passion and kindness and love for victims is unbridled and unparalleled no matter what channel or panel you're on. Good logic. Runkle. Uncivil. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. See, that means a lot. Um, best experience of JD scared is when Rocky was on monitor. Oh, she has a react. He has a visible reaction. He looks down and sees her face on the monitor. He like, it's kind of funny to watch. Oh, TikTok okay. is the best place to find that. <laughs> okay. Can't keep up. Um, <clears throat> love the combo. A great trio for this analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
as a survivor, when having to discuss my behavior is staring at the floor or close my eyes. The only exception is when I interviewed with feds, I felt my, I felt I had to give more eye contact. Well, there we go. And this and is dangerous. By, this is actually dangerous. I want to make a comment to this one. Don't force yourself to change your behaviors when you're actually testifying and giving statements about your experiences of domestic violence. When you start doing that, because it's a forced action, it can actually come across as deceptive. So, Honestly, mm -hmm. if if when you are answering these questions and if you're giving these statements, it don't don't try to change your own internal thought process to you'll you'll mess with the statement itself. Good point. By the way, I just want to say starting out with as a survivor, I'm glad that you're there on that path that you're feeling more of a survivor than as a victim. And I, I, I hope that your journey continues seriously. Yep. Um, in an audio, AH tried to rip off JD's face and he said to her, no, you will never get to look at these eyes ever again. He doesn't want to look at her as she tries emotionally to control him. Sure. I, I agree. Um, good survival. <laughs> Just... um, could your eye movement when recalling have a link to hand dominance? Could. I don't know the spe specificity of why people develop their patterns they just kind of do it could be hand eye could it be anything it could be just um i haven't closure. seen i personally haven't seen research that suggests that it does it's not something i i look for really could be i don't know yeah um let's see i survived dv and ex escaped it i could never look anyone in the eye about what happened and to this day i still can't do it and i'm sorry i mean it like it, it is hard. The ripples. It is, it is hard to read these messages. I'm so glad that you guys are sending these in. It is really, I, it is wonderful that you guys have this confidence to send this stuff in. And I'm so happy for every single one of you guys that actually got out of those situations. It's, it's hard to read them and pretend like we have any knowledge of what you went through. So when we say thank you and we're glad that you're a survivor, please know that we really do mean that like from the bottom of our heart, like it, it's a big thing. And we also hope, because we can't say for sure, that other survivors are seeing these same messages and, and maybe that'll that'll help them as well. Yep. Um, That's, regarding... a great point. That's a great point all, to all the survivors watching. Like you may not realize how many people see that comment and say to themselves like, okay, well, that's inspiring and I can do the same. So thank you for speaking up about it. It means the world. For sure. Um, regarding CBS Elaine, to date, no real victim of SV has ever testified on live TV. Is that true? I, I don't. I don't want to even speculate on that one because yeah. that's that's. I hated that. I hated that response when it was first given. Like somehow, we're somehow it's to be given less credibility, more credibility. Somehow that has an impact on whether the testimony is true or not. I, I just that was that was a not a classy move by Elaine. Yeah, well, one of uh, many non. Does Spidey like the TV show The Mentalist? Spidey loves the TV show The Mentalist. I have on my other channel, Spidey Hypnosis. I did a full breakdown, like 13, 14 episodes, where I took oh. scenes from The Mentalist and broke them down. That's where all this analysis stuff started. But I broke down the legitimacy and how likely it is that he'd be able to do things like that in real life. Some of it is very likely. Some of it is highly unlikely. But yeah, I love the show. You should do it again. When, when, when all this slows down, you know, reaction. Back to it. I know you've done some stuff with Chase. Mm -hmm. um, I sent a private message to AH letting her know the bankruptcy info after Rob's previous segment on bankruptcy. Oh, good. Good. <laughs> um, panel, I really feel that JD should let AH experience the magnitude of all this judicial process. She needs to experience this failure fully or she will never learn a lesson. If she's ready to learn a lesson, that that would be good. Um, I love you guys, but I adore Angry Rob is so hot. <laughs> Spidey, I want to be best friends with you and Chase Hughes. I don't know. Great. Let's do it. Me too. <laughs> Mercedes Avery, thank you very much. I deeply, deeply appreciate it. And folks, that, that actually, is, that's it. <laughs> we made it through the super chats. Look at that, and man. It's still daylight outside. Under two hours. Under two hours, which is <laughs> incredible. Incredible. Wow. Way to go, man. But 
amazing. I love having stuff hanging out there because then I can beg and plead and cajole. You got to come back. You don't have to beg me, buddy. Got to come back, folks. This is just no more, no more, no more poop corn stuff. <laughs> no, I think I think that metaphor should make it into every stream from now on. <laughs> no <laughs> more poop corn stuff. <laughs> Eric, thanks for the great panel, Rob. I love your passion and compassion for survivors. I am one, Spidey. I now reference your videos on self-protection to my clients. Love to all. Awesome. And as a survivor of DA, Rob can speak for me any day. Amazing. Um, I worked at Family Corps for 20 years. Very few resources and so archaic. I love your passion, Rob. Wish you worked where I did. And I said I was through. It's like, okay, people are like, oh, no, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> Um, one more, another survivor. Oh, this is great. It, by the way, this, I, I happily read this survivors. Seriously. Thank you. One more, another survivor here. Frankly, LawTube has made me aware how much wider the male identified part of our circle of support actually is. And you know what? I, on that note, I would think that recognizing abuse as a universal problem is beneficial to everyone. To say that yes. it's not just one ghettoized group, that it is, in fact, something suffered by all, and then we can get behind it. I think we have a, lo a lot of problems in society because we like to pigeonhole and say something is this particular group's problem, and they're the in-group or the out-group or whatever, when it may be more widely suffered. And if everybody can relate to it, like, say, cancer, I like to bring it up a lot, but we all know people who have suffered cancer. So I think universally we all agree cancer is bad. So let's elevate this to be a cancer so we can all fight it. Um, guys, you're the brains. Help me out. Sorry. <laughs> I can't on that. You got me on the cancer and the, yeah, so. Oh, okay. Oh, geez. I didn't even think about it. I apologize, man. <laughs> um, good, buddy. Survivor and advocate here, oh, and I'm aware of uh, JD's ability to get through that trial without a breakdown. Oh, I'm in awe, sorry, of his ability to get through that trial without a breakdown trigger episode. Yeah, that was huge. He was, he was hanging in there. It was, it was um, I, I think that, Rob, you can answer this. Maybe that's why he was fighting a little bit with Rottenborn is, is mm. sort of his way of holding it together and, and obviously humor. Humor is humor is a defense mechanism for him. He went into a place that was happy. Um, you saw him doodle and write notes, and he would play with the candy and reorganize things in front of him. That was that was a massive distraction, and that was kind of how he dealt with it. the The humor was kind of a deflect deflection. He had a bunch of tricks that he learned prior to doing that on how to manage that emotional. That emotional reaction it was very very he was very well taught on how to how to manage that emotional issue there was actually a moment though with ben chu that was, that was so freaking touching and funny in a way though when ben chu reached over and grabbed some of his candy oh yeah i that was awesome i, that, I, that, that I, I love what he, 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 he when he ate and johnny's looking at him like what did you just do and ben chu's like yeah that 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 moment was really encapsulated such a, a unique relationship. And I, mm -hmm. I think it was helpful all around. Um, last one, Camille gave an interview in her native Spanish language. And it's lovely. Oh, Gosh. She gives a few extra that. details about her feelings on the case. You know, it's so uh, weird. Mr. My Mr. Video Upper was... Torso. Where did that interview happen? Drop it in the chat, please. I want to watch it. It's on YouTube. Um, It's so funny because when I did my video with, Rob, my first collab, I kind of, not thoughtlessly, but just sort of without giving you too much thought, I said something like, because Camille was asking about the knife that said hasta, uh, hasta la muerte, and she asked about that, and she pronounced hasta la muerte, and I said something like, it was nice to hear her say that in her native tongue. And people like, not too many, but like a few people jumped on me like, she's American, she's American, Spanish is in her native tongue, and I'm like, I mean, I mean, like the language of her parents, the language that she heard around mm -hmm. her and her parents and grandparents growing up. Like, I didn't feel like that needed any defending, but it was just weird how, but I'm, I, I totally agree. It's, I saw the interview and it's a different her when she speaks Spanish there. I guess maybe it's because it's the same for me when I speak Armenian anywhere in the world, if I run into someone who's Armenian uh, or French and I speak that language, that's not the mainstream one. You feel like you open up a little bit more because you're talking to someone who kind of 
kind of gets you. You share similar lineage, similar background. So yeah, she did open up um, quite a bit, and 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 it was it's lovely. The demeanor was lovely. And culture is huge. Yeah. Um, Y'all go on with Andrew. It'd be an amazing panel. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Legal mindset. Yeah, maybe Andrew. Like okay, Rob. I always make fun of him, and I think it's deserved. Andrew Esquire, Esquire. I mean, he literally named himself a redundancy. Oh, I didn't know that. That he, he goes by Andrew Esquire. Yeah. Oh, please do. Just say Eric said, "Hey, um, say hi to Andrew Esquire, Esquire." And question. All right, guys. I'm go ahead and stop on <laughs> super chats. No, I do, keep I, going. I keep going. Just keep. We gotta do. We gotta we'll do lightning round. Lightning round. Okay. No, well, no, she doesn't believe her narrative. She is faking it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Too fast. Rewind. <laughs> Speed round. Spidey's here. <laughs> he throws the web out. Okay. <clears throat> There's a lot of research on memory. Look up the Challenger study, the Disneyland study, the hotter balloon study, tons of stuff that indicate that as years go by, our memories get really, really messed up. In fact, if you were calling anything from more than 10 years ago, even if you're certain that it played out a certain way and you would bet a lot of money on it, it's likely that it wasn't that way. The Challenger study for me was a mind-blowing one because that people write down where they were and what they were doing when the Challenger blew up, the, the space shuttle. And then I think it was 15, maybe 20 years later, they went to those same people, asked them to tell the story and their narrative for what it was now and back then didn't have a single thing in common in an overwhelming majority of cases to the point where when they saw their original written testimony, they said, no, this is forged. There's no way I wrote that because that's not what happened. So our memories change. Now, take the fact that memory is a flawed system and we've seen that again and again and again. Add to it the fact that Amber Heard is diagnosed BPD, borderline personality disorder. This could mean that in time, something that, Jay, uh, that Johnny Depp said that was a little aggressive or a little inappropriate, something that hurt her emotionally, in time, as her mind revisited that with her mm -hmm. BPD mind, she could have added physical abuse to that. Because to someone who has BPD, sometimes abandonment or emotional abuse or what she perceives as emotional abuse can feel as painful as physical abuse. So I wouldn't be so quick to say that she doesn't believe her narrative at all. I believe there are parts of her narrative that she's really embellishing. There are parts that she knows don't make sense. So I agree with Rob there, but there could very well be certain parts where she's talking about things that her interpretation of it and what she actually believes happened could be a complete metamorphosis of what did happen due to how memory changes and how her BPD would play into that. Yeah, I buy fair that. enough. And, and, okay. and we've talked about that. Yeah. Love you, Rob. It, love you, love you, Andrew. And I agree with everything. No, that was, I, I buy that. That was good. Okay. All right. Um, I, want to put this out can't pay for a super chat and i'm a survivor too and yes i i feel bad obviously prioritizing super chats but it's kind of a a, a quantity um situation but i absolutely do appreciate and i did try to pull some not um super chats and i very much care jamie for real whether you do a super chat or not if you're a survivor it, it's i don't want to tie it to a monetary thing so i am really happy to have you thank you um Rob, I'm curious if you used a spring pole lathe. No, I have not. Um, it's look, you'll have to look it up. It's it's hard to explain. So it's basically a seat with bike pedals that that runs a lathe. No, I have not used one. All right, I survived the mentalist and was saved by psych. <laughs> uh, vid production person Ben Chu is having a reaction to the bright lights. I think could could well be could well be. Um, when oh, I was with interesting. Sorry, can you can you bring that back? I was having a reaction to the bright lights. Yeah, Carrie, I brought that up earlier. Really screenshot this because I might mention that, Carrie. If you're okay with this, I might, I might bring that up in um, in my video, my analysis that I'm filming tonight. If you're okay with that, Carrie, let us know in the chat because uh, that's a great point. It could very well be because in that studio, it's really really bright. And in the courtroom, he wouldn't have those lights in his eyes. So it's very possible that the lights are drying out his eyes. And that's what we're seeing there. Um, great freaking point. As Sorry, a performer, Spidey can relate. Paraphrase. <laughs> um, when I was with my abusive ex-spouse, and even today, after a decade later, I always tended to downplay it, not exasperate. Exacerbate. Exacerbate? 
God, she said sense. exasperate, but she's that's what that's what she meant. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, the the abuse. Um, Camille was in El Gordo. El Gordo de la Flaca. Is that still a show? Seriously? I don't know. I don't know. MST, 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 Amber Heard are wrong. The Justice for Johnny Depp community have opened a very important dialogue for victims, survivors to share experiences without shame or judgment. Abuse has no gender. Happy birthday, JD. I, I agree with that completely. I think it's being talked about more than I've seen for a while. Um, I love how trauma-informed JD's legal team was. They checked in on him. AD's team had zero regard for survivors of the public and the jury. They weren't really checking yes. in on her either. Yes, Mercedes, this is very accurate depiction of how one legal team knew how to handle domestic violence survivors, and the other legal team didn't. Great or, point. Great point. Or they both knew, but one of them maybe knew that they didn't have to do that, if you know what I'm saying possible <laughs> i mean if you if you feel like maybe my client is not necessarily a victim you might forget to do all the steps that are yep. involved in looking for a victim yeah just a thought i'm just maybe saying. yeah and it wouldn't even necessarily be intentional it'd just be kind of like a it just didn't come to mind um i'm a i am both a survivor and an abuser Interesting. That does happen, though. After being abused for so long, I became so angry that I lashed out to anyone. I had to get help because I knew I was damaged. In a much better place now, I had to take accountability to heal. Thank you. Seriously, thank you for for that because I do think a lot of abusers were abused. I mean, it's a perpetuated cycle in, in families. Yeah. Et cetera. I mean, and I, by the way, I do think Amber Heard and Whitney Heard we're both abused. I absolutely believe that growing up. And I feel like Whitney was broken and Amber became an aggressor, in my opinion. But I don't know. You guys going to leave me hanging out there. No, I <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's, I, that's, I, that's I, a, again, that's I, I don't have I, I the think data that on that. So I'm going to just. Okay. Sorry. Uh, DB Survivor, your empathy is tremendous. Keep talking about the truth of every situation. Three Musketeers. Oh, see, there you go. We're dubbed. You got to come back all the time. No. There you go. <laughs> all yep. of you are fam <laughs> fabulous. Um, love, Angry Rob. Thank you. Um, advice here from my editor. Be the farmer that milks that super <laughs> catch. <laughs> by the way, Eric, by the way, by the way, sorry, I'm cutting in on this on this comment because a light just went off. I'm, I apologize. I just, I, that was me being a little insensitive, but... <laughs> In my video that I did last week, Eric, I said something because I just talk sometimes in my video and mm -hmm. I leave footage in there. And I said that I didn't know what super chats were mm -hmm. or supers were back then. And you told me, turn them on. And I said, okay. And, I, and you said, turn it on and keep an eye on the premiere. And I did that. And then there were people who were like, oh, Spidey's obviously being deceptive when he says you didn't know what supers were. No, 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 no. Eric, you can confirm this because you're the Eric I was talking about. I did not know what supers were when I made my video last week, correct? You did not. I also told him to do a premiere because he didn't know about the premiere. He was going to just release the video. Uh, he was demonetized by YouTube, and he was waiting to see if the video would clear. And he's like, son of a I got to get this out there. What do I do? Do I put it out there or don't I put it out there? And he went through the um, whole routine that, and of course, I was, you know, I was a dear sympathetic friend saying, welcome to my <laughs> world, Spidey. Welcome to my world. How does it feel? No. Um, but I am actually looking right now to see if this is demonetized because it was last week when I was on. Cool. It takes a, a day or two. But, to come but Eric, the bottom line yeah. is, because there was there wasn't much, but there was a couple of comments oh, like, okay. oh, he's for sure lying. How do you not know? When you when I was filming that video and we had a conversation on the phone, you all you said to me is turn supers on and then premiere this. And I said, mm -hmm. What is a super? And you were trying to tell me, like, oh, it's ways to do this and that. But I legitimately did not know. And I was like, okay, I'll just follow you on and this. I told him and at that where time, to go. even as I was uploading, I had no idea what it was. Can you confirm that? Yes. I confirm. told him what they were, where to go, <laughs> go to YouTube studio, go to the monetization tab go on the left, go to the tab, turn them <laughs> on. Even if you're demonetized, maybe some people will help you out. You won't lose all the money on yeah, the video. And, then it worked. and I was like, oh my God, Eric, right, people are... People are giving me money with comments. And you're like, yeah, that's what that is. That's why I told you to turn it on. 
Yes. And by the <laughs> way, those who are giving Spidey money with the comments, he literally was having to put out a video with nothing on it, no ad dollars or anything. And, and it's... Yeah. What, yeah. A, what a stupid thing. Like, what a stupid thing for me to lie about. Like, someone who makes content on busting deception, I'm going to get on my channel and lie about not knowing what a super is. I, I didn't know. I've never, I, I've streamed on my other, on my magic channel, but you can go check it out. I've never turned supers on, on that channel. I, I just used to share magic and kind of bring in other magicians and stuff like that. So we, I never turned them on and I've heard of super chats obviously, but I, I had no clue what a super thanks was zero clue. So well, that's new. Game. super thanks are new actually. Super thanks. Oh, yeah. are, are, I, are, I, yeah, I have yeah, no yeah, idea what yeah. any of these things were. So, I knew what a super chat was because I've seen it on Alita stream and, and yours, but that was the extent of what I knew. I didn't know what the other two were, stickers and thanks. So to all of you who said I had a cluster of deception, keep watching the channel because you need some practice. So focus. In, focus. <laughs> so in other focus. words, this this segment is oh, going to be lifted and put on his channel later. <laughs> you got the time steps noted. Two hours and four minutes in and moving on. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, does Rob still believe Elaine hated Amber? I think there was a heck of a lot of tension that we saw. I don't know if it was hate, but I still don't. I can't reconcile that with what I saw on the, the Today Show or the, the morning talk shows. So I don't know. All right. I had to stop watching the trial sometimes because I could feel Johnny's pain and re-traumatization. I'm glad now he is vindicated. Yes. I mean, yes. Um, thanks, Spidey. Makes me feel better about my own memory. Awesome. Um. I'm a survivor and left with PTSD. I understand the things that Amber stressed, but really desensitizing is a way to deal. Much better than holding others hostage. AH did no justice for to PTSD. I agree. Um, as a woman who's applying to law school, RN, Camille is most definitely an inspiration to aspiring Latina women lawyers. Vamos. And uh, by the way, I'd say all women. I mean, yep. all, all, just all people, all people. Thank you. Cause I mean, I am, um, she amazing young seizing it and Spidey, you have a beautiful Spanish pronunciation. I thought you were Hispanic heritage, never suspected Armenian. Oh, it is muy amable. Gracias. I uh, spent two summers performing in Mexico. So I picked up some, uh, some stuff. And also the pronunciation of most languages is easy for an Armenian because we have letters that can only be pronounced by inhabitants of Middle Earth, the Elvish. <laughs> we have, have letters, we have letters you wouldn't believe. You activate <laughs> the things back here. We have ghaz and ghaz and it's, it's awful. So we usually find, but thank you. I really appreciate that. Crazy. Um, I'd love you all to do a collab with the behavior panel. Well, Yo, Scott fixes his internet. Maybe we could. <laughs> well, 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 Katie, Katie, this is this is grift moment. So bear with me, Rob. If you look no. at this channel, you will find not one, not two, not three, but I believe four appearances in the entire behavior panel. You will find pro easily over a dozen appearances of separate members and different combinations of the behavior panel, and I don't always talk about it, but they actually call me the fifth beetle. And I'm, I'm not kidding. Spidey can confirm that. Um, if Chase is still in the chat, he can confirm it as well. No, yeah, that's what they call him. But, um, and I, I hope all of you do consider subscribing. Um, if you like this, there is Please do. a Everyone lot more. Does. Um, survivor of t DV 10 years later, this trial, and it made it easily being made understood by you folks has been so cathartic for so many vic survivors and victims. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Chu wears glasses also could be a factor with lights. Possibly. Um, Rob, random question. I saw your Twitter post about your dad in the bar, which is beautiful. And I saw it on Instagram. I, I love the symbolism of the, the really dark material next to the wood. I don't know if you did that deliberately, but it made me think of consumption and cancer. So, um, and, and, and drawing beauty out of, what is there and i'm i might thank be projecting you. into it but that's just no, what I saw. kind of intentional yeah thank you very much it was that was a very special project for me and then the as far as the question pacific northwest i um my family's had a house up there since uh 1960s so i grew i go up there in the in the summers spend uh the warmer months up there i love it up there it'll be a good place to go better than here in the humidity 
Um, of course, you can use the data. Uh, ben Shu has blue eyes also, and they are more sensitive. Yeah, I, I know I have to have sunglasses all the time. Cool. And what does demonetize mean? Okay. No. When you There's, say bad, naughty words on YouTube, they can take away the money from the when channel. When you say words like Amber Heard, <laughs> it's your money. It, it, can, it can be that. It can be um, the I word. That the rhymes of Schmeckton. Don't uh, don't even don't 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 start playing with the words because someone's no. going to say something. I know. Okay, oh, you guys are. Oh man, there's more super chats. <laughs> shout out, shout out, D Baker says that. Um, see you next Tuesday is a is a big one for demonetization. Um, I guess so. <laughs> the phrase might be too for all I know. <laughs> but um, okay. Um, demonetize. There's different levels. There's flat out that you're. Your video is red. You get no money on it whatsoever. Um, all of ours, ours go yellow. I call it going yellow. And that means it's limited monetization. All you get are very low, limited to no ads. And you get some uh, YouTube premiere money possibly. But but that's what that means. And it, it is devastating to a uh, video because uh, a video mm, maybe make $2 to $5 a um, um for a thousand views or whatever it is, right? If it's limited, it's going to be down into the pennies. And what happens is when the video goes yellow or see monetized, especially on my channel, I they don't have a long leg. So I get most of my views in the first day or two. And YouTube will review it and approve it. And after like the second day, it's approved. Good news. Your channel's good to go, except 90% of my views are gone. So <laughs> You only get paid for you know the views if you're monetized at the time. And you know what? I think, hold on. I think I lost my own place on this. Oh, I hope I didn't. What does demonetize mean? I gotta find this. Okay, good. I scrolled up and I saw even more. Eric binged. Thank you, thank you. Um, please do clip Ben Emotional online. Crime and court TV. I'll, I'll cover it. Super sticker. Thank you. <clears throat> As a survivor of DV, have a permanent dimple now. Oof. Wow. That's brutal. I'm also currently working through a relationship of mental DV. Amber does not speak for me. The best made by Camille was that DV has no gender. Yeah. Thank you. I, I agree. Um, stay on and do another clip. <laughs> Uh, uh, maybe Espanol Camille. Um, let's also encourage our daughters to be women like Camille instead of princesses. A good point. Yeah. Hugs the to two all survivors out there. Huh? The two aren't mutually exclusive. No, I think no, Camille correct. very much yeah. has the capacity to be super, like, I don't know what princess means. So I don't know if I'm talking about the right thing. But I think Camille, besides being a powerhouse of a strong woman, I also think can be extremely, like, graceful and delicate and beautiful. Like, I think, I think you know, different situations call for different things. I don't think the two things are mutually exclusive. I would say let's encourage our daughters to be exactly what it is they want to be, what, whatever part of them thrives the most. Mm -hmm. But yes, to be strong women, 100%. Agreed. <laughs> this one is for Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I only mention Latino women because that demographic is even smaller when it comes to practicing lawyers, I think. But sure. yes, to all that. And, and I wasn't trying to down no, I, was, I was trying to just leap off of it to encourage yeah. uh, others as well. Um, I'm sorry, StreamYard scrolling can get wonky when I'm going down. Um, Chris and Rob, can you work with some of the others and do a PSA similar to your rant that they can post for others to see? It may help DV victims and their supporters. That's not a bad idea. I actually have I have something in the works that's more comprehensive on what individuals can do, should do, they should how they should feel protected, how they can speak. I'm currently talking to a few different psychologists and psychiatrists to see if someone can go on with me to explain both sides of the equation, the legal and the psychiatric. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can put you with somebody if you if you need. Please do. Need. Yeah, put me in touch. <clears throat> All right. Um, did you notice Ben would blink when he? Would also stop talking. Could this possibly him be him overcoming stutter? Fascinating. Maybe, I'll, I'll look at it. Possible. I didn't. I didn't correlate the two because two because I did see some blinks, heavy blinks mid sentence at times. Uh, it could be if it's sort of like a 
usually that comes with a deep breath and more of a tight sort of thing like this as you sort of, you know, they have breathing exercises. Usually they teach you if you have a, a stutter. I, I don't think, anyways, listen, I, I didn't see that, but it's possible. Um, love knowing Spidey and Chase are buds. He's the one on behavior panel I respect the most. Tan daddy fan. I have, uh, I have some uh, I have some pictures on my phone that can challenge how much you respect Chase. I'm kidding. It, oh it, he just likes to send me like he just likes to send me like lower Chase. body shots when he's at the beach tanning on wherever he happens to be. I just have an like, album of just his legs on a beach, like a lot of them. Chase is like amazing. more than any one dude should have of another dude friend. Maybe he's telling you something, Spidey. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I don't. I, he's got a, He's he's Dickie. brilliant, and he's got this amazing sense of humor that I wish he would let out more. No, because that's what makes it amazing. Um, Dickie, worse, your channel can get nixed because of chat, which is true, by the way, folks. Uh, that's why moderators get... are in there. Um, do you think Johnny is going to make her um, or enforce her to pay the judgment? Don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see. It. He's never getting that money. Not all of it, but he's gonna make her try. <laughs> um, Pascal had a chat with two male DV survivors. Maybe y'all can check it out, and y'all can offer some to come on chat. Sure. Right. Yeah. Love this trio. Trio, thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, if I was Johnny, I may consider waiving the judgment in exchange for public apology and for her and Eve B to never utter my name again. Oh, good luck. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen, but at least he's in the power position. What am I? Come on. There it is. Okay. Um, BPD are here. Oh, okay. Love it if I could ever talk to you about it. My side bad effects on relationships and experience with other BPDers to compare with Amber. Yes. Um, go to, if you, if you want, I will happily talk to you. Go to erichunley.com slash contact. This is for anybody. If you want to reach out and you just you know, want to send an email or whatever, you know, please tell me exactly what it's about and everything. But my website, erichunley.com slash contact. I have a contact form that, that will get to me. And definitely very, very interested. Um, I like to speak to people and not just about people. So mm -hmm. if I'm talking about something and it may describe you or it may sound like you, I, I, I am open to that because I don't, I don't like talking about people without giving it. By the way, there's, a, there's one or two comments that are saying, uh, did I, maybe I used the word weird when I was talking about Ben's takes. I don't know if I said it or someone else said it. I apologize if I did. I didn't mean, for that to be condescending or demeaning in any way whatsoever. If I said weird, I probably just meant like out might of place, me. like weird in that moment that might for him me. to do. I don't think anything about his behavior is weird whatsoever. Uh, so I hope it didn't come off that way at all. It was probably me who said it. And oh. and use what Spidey said, apply that to me. Because when yeah, I said yeah, none weird, of us mean disrespect I mean out of place. Any means. No, oh, wow. To people who study behavior, no behavior is weird. When we say weird, if ever we say weird, we probably Unusual. just mean it as like out of place in that moment for someone's baseline. So, uh, you know, good point. Uh, Super Sticker, thank you. Binged as in the noise for going to 46.7. Not sure. Binged, yeah. Binged. Uh, I, I, I didn't get the reference. I'm sorry. Um, I'm not a physical survivor, but still overcoming trauma from emo emotional abuse and manipulation. Love you all's takes. Psych degree here as well. Yeah, and emotional can be devastating too. Oh. No, you binged a la Emily de Banker. There's a clock. There's this little thing that bangs oh, every time you get like a... Over there. Okay. Okay. That, sorry. Yes. And I have that because of Emily de Baker. I saw hers. I was like, ooh, where did you get that? This, who? No, who are you talking about? Um, Emily shadow. de Baker. Uh, somebody you, said it was binging. That, that Eric, shadow. Eric who? Shadow. Oh. Oh, okay. God, I know Someone her. Is. <laughs> Freak. <laughs> Spidey, what's your Hogwarts house? I think spy. I spy Snape on a shelf. Oh no! So what is it? <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is. I, I've never even read those books. That Bob, is Snape, do you speak by Spanish? The way. He's my favorite. Uh, 
I lost the ability to speak fluently a while ago, but there's an Easter egg in my background that might help you figure out if I understand it. I okay. Oh, it. I passed this accidentally. Um, yes, yeah, Spidey does have an Instagram account. Spidey Hypnosis? Spidey Hypnosis, one word, S-P-I-D-E-Y-H-Y-P-N-O-S-I-S. He also it has a, a Twitter it's account. in the description of most of my videos. He also has the same Twitter account, but I don't think he checks it. Never. I've never been on it. <laughs> so, um, uh, Spanish, sorry. Um, if JD weighs the money, he should include an ironclad STFU for AH and a crew. Agreed. I mean, that would be definitely a requirement. Um, almost there. AH Jones, not... Not speak for me. My ex, uh, ex went to prison in the UK for a DB on me. I have bad injuries. AH is a disgrace. Thank you all for your support. Big love. Sorry you've gone through that. Happy birthday, Johnny. It was a good day. Uh, DB survivor, BPD, CPTSD, and a narcissistic father. This trial has been somewhat of an emotional reckoning for me because I'm typically dead inside. Now I'm understanding why. I hope it's reckoning in a way, though, that's helping you work through it. Uh, that that maybe that's a good thing. Uh, I I don't know. I'm not knowledgeable, so I. Someone, uh, someone in the comments said that Emily didn't want the nickname to be talked about in public. She said it on Viva Frey's stream yesterday with ten thousand people listening, and I called her shadow about seventy thousand times after that, and. It didn't seem to be anywhere. I, I think I, I think Emily is probably toying with them. All I right, folks. Good. I got through it. Made it. Went over the two hours, guys. Sorry, I lied. No, you're didn't good, buddy. To. Um, thank you. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> we okay, all Carla, this is officially the last one, yep. and I apologize to anybody after this. I I I I can't. I, I thank you. You'll be just giving me money and YouTube money. Thank you, though, very, very much. As a former shelter manager for DV and SA victims, I'm so grateful, yet heart hurt for this perfect storm that brings such clarity to the fact that men are victims, too. And please, folks, I, I really, um, I hate begging, you know, and asking for subs and things like that or subscriptions, but I'm very proud of people like Spidey and Rob and Peter Hyatt and the behavior panel and Really, I feel like I have the best guests in the world. No offense, Latu, but I have the best guests. <laughs> um, and I would deeply appreciate your support to watch them. That helps me bring in even more guests. And some of the guests might surprise you. Like I've had John McAfee on. I've had Carol Baskin on. And it's a variety. So... I hope you consider subscribing. Look around the channel. I bet you'll find something you like. And on that note, Spidey, my hero, Rob, my other hero. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much, Eric. It was a blast. Thank you. Always a